Because so all I can see is the light in my face, and it's yeah. like, ah, so, ah I really didn't seat, plan that very well. Have I got my seat high enough? Am I at the top of the screen? So. Uh, yeah, you're mostly there. Let me just adjust this light because it's blinding me. Oh, uh, right. That Hello, everyone. Ah, oh, yeah, yes, it's uh, it's, uh, it's fifty. Uh, yeah, oh. yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, coming oh, through your speakers, Ted. Background. Oh, That's why I'm getting nice. feedback. I can hear oh, 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 technical oh, issues. Oh, it's all got the pot. We've already just started. I know. <laughs> You're having all <laughs> so I, problems. I, I logged into the uh, the e models live stream on YouTube. <laughs> 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 so, You're like, where is it? It's in a tab. I don't know where it is. Uh, all that noise was coming from. Ah, oh, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another Monday night live stream. Yes, hi. <laughs> it's me, me, and him. Morning, uh, And him, Fox, Fox. Yeah, there's no Chris tonight. Unfortunately, he's had a bit of a um, uh, urgent family emergency, and he's now currently sat in A and E with his. Uh, daughter, I think he said his daughter, uh, are waiting to be seen by the doctor. So we, we wish him well. Uh, I think he's about in chat somewhere. I'll just get the chat up. Yes, wow. I think he is. All we know is it involves trampolines. Yeah, it involves trampolines and kids. Yes. So. The two do not go together. Trampolines. Yes. Yes. Don't, don't ever try. Uh, oh, yes. So what we're going to do tonight, uh, as usual, we'll take it as it comes, but it's your show. It's up to you to lead us. All along and ask the questions and everything else like that things whatever um, two hours of randomness well, yeah well a couple of yeah whatever, whatever. Made up nonsense no and so, yeah, you've got to remember that if you are watching this if you come through the e-models link and you want to join in the chat and you're on your pc and everything like that i know it works on some uh, other platforms as well now you can join in the chat uh, just click the bottom. There's a little icon down the bottom that says YouTube. If you click on that, it will take you over to the YouTube channel and you could join us in all our glory. Yep, especially if you watch on emodels.co.uk forward slash live where there is no chat, click on the little YouTube icon. My opening spiel, as always, uh, if you're in the chat, hello, welcome. Uh, behave yourselves. <laughs> uh, Chris is in there at the minute. He is in there and he's modding you and he's got the ban hammer. So, you know, behave. Uh, if you'd like to ask us a question, and for the love of dog, please ask us questions because we have nothing to talk about otherwise. Um, either pop them in big fat capital letters so we can see them because Chris isn't with us and Chris is our normal comment dolly, uh, comment dolly, trolley dolly, comment dolly thing. He looks after the comments, so he's not here. So we've got to read them and do the hosting and looking glorious and everything. So uh, we might miss your comments. So apologies if we do. So put them in big fat capital letters. Uh, or if you'd like to, there is the super chat option where you can click on the little dollar sign at the bottom of the chat. And that will pop your comment in a big, massive, pastel-shaded box that we can't possibly miss. They're all very nice colours. One of them is pink. Yeah, we do try our best to get through them all, but it just sometimes the chat moves so quickly that we don't get chats yet, and then it disappears off the top of the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I got told off uh, last week. Uh, my mum says to me, you didn't stop wiggling around in your chair. I was doing this all night, and I said, there's two reasons for that. One is I needed a wee, but two is... When I used to work in an office for like many, many years, you get so bored in an office that your brain goes, uh, and you just start doing this in your chair to give yourself something to think about. And it's false habit now when I sit in this office chair. I'm like, la, la, la. la. So I apologize. I will try not to wiggle around so much. Yeah, I get my chair. It's wedged up against the, the, the bench. Mind you, it squeaks and, and sinks. I think you're already sinking, Ted. Yeah, it's, uh, yes. Ted, you're sinking. You're sinking down. Uh, down dive, dive. Yeah, yeah. So that's what that's um, that's what my I, yeah. I do I do have that habit as well, and you often hear the. It's it just if, if this wasn't an office chair, I wouldn't do it. But because it's an office chair, it's not because I'm bored. It's because my brain goes, my my butt senses it's sat in an office chair and goes to my brain. Right, you need to move the chair around now because you're at a desk doing call center work and it's really boring. Please crack on. Mm. Uh, whatever it's instinct. What, whatever did we do with our office chairs to model in before uh, or before we? We brought office chairs. Uh, what did I used to have before I had? Uh, no, I was trying to think now because I used to have like a big desk where this desk is here. I used to have like um, a desk with a drawing board on it and stuff. And I can't remember what chair I had. Uh, I had no idea. It wasn't an office because this office chair, I'll kind of admit this on camera. I used to work like, good God, it's nearly 15 years ago now. I used to work for Anchor House and Trust. And this is one of their chairs. I kind of nicked it. Sorry. Uh, uh, was, we were clearing uh, out an office and I was like, I love that chair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, but mine were uh, 
procured from various offices around, you know, but when you'd see them sort of stood next to the skip, can I have that? Yeah, well, it's got no legs on it, but I'll fix it. Yeah. Is that the roundabout way of saying you nicked it from the police? No, <laughs> no, no I procured it from the offices. I procured it from the stores section of the police <laughs> without necessarily filling in the form. Yeah. yeah, the superintendent doesn't have anything to sit on, but I've got a very nice chair. Yes. Um, who have we got in chat then? Tom? Uh, Tom? I called you, why did I call you Tom? Tom? Who's Tom? Right, who is in the chat tonight? Yeah, we've got a million questions already. I saw them whiz by really quick. <laughs> yeah, Scott was first in tonight from the land of Fudge and Puffins. That's all the way up in the Orkney. Yes, or my house. Seymour Bobbington says, good evening. Simon D, Tony Blackwell, Richard Furzan. Good evening, everyone. John Bennett, uh, Lord Barclay III. Uh, that guy called Gross Models. We're back. He's, yeah, I don't know who he is. Yeah, is he, do you think he'd be using the free Wi-Fi at the hospital? Uh, I don't know. You're allowed to. Do they have free Wi-Fi? Yeah, It'll be sat in the cafe then. Yeah, the National Health is getting good these days. You get brilliant treatment, brilliant care, and free Wi-Fi. Yeah, cool. Yeah, but the coffee's like £4 a cup. Yeah, <laughs> and out of machine. Yeah, well, he could have taken his stuff with him and broadcast live from the, uh, from the A&E. It's true. He could have taken some stuff and been denubbing while he's waiting. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. Oh, all oh, right, Phil Kett, Dave, where's the rum gar? Bunk, Dave, where's the rum gone barker? Uh, he's gone for a brew anyway, so he probably didn't hear that mistake. Uh, yeah. Max Scale Models, uh, Wayne Hayward, uh, Matt, Matty's Metal Detecting South Wales. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. What have you ever, have you ever found anything good, Matty? Yeah, tell us if you ever found any good loot or boot. Yeah. Or where's the best place to go for loot? Yes. Uh, obviously, you metal detect sensibly with K. Uh, Zadster uh, RJC models. Hello, Ted and Fox. He says Ostrich 9000, Strenum 13, uh, Fester from 67, Fester 67's workshop. Jim Chapman. Uh, Phil East. Oh, come on. Jamie Bourne. I'm Jamie. Yes. Yeah, I have seen you've got your sticker. Good. Yeah, I did send the stickers out the other day because I went for a haircut and I had to pass the haircut. 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 Yeah. I thought I couldn't have a haircut with what Fox said last week. If Ted's got a haircut and you haven't got any stickers, he's telling fibs. Did I put you in a corner? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, oh, I can't get away with it now. I've got to go and post them. Yeah. Oh. So, yep. So we're on to the next round of stickers. Um, so if you win stickers and things later on, um, I'll get them all sent out at the end of the month so like after four shows i'll send them all out yeah. so if you win more than one sticker if you want more than one sticker if you don't if you want to send a question in and you don't want a sticker just say so uh yeah why would you not want a sticker because sticker you might have loads already doesn't matter just stick on different things there yeah. are many things in every average house that you can put a sticker on yeah. you know, <laughs> shelves tellies doors cats animals yeah mm. or, yeah or, or like this week where windermere lake cruises various boats now have stickers all over them yes <laughs> yeah uh, i've been sending the guy some pictures of uh the the boats around windermere <laughs> they, they appear to have an e-model sticker miraculously appear on them yeah it's like on the front of the ship it's got swan e-models <laughs> <laughs> sponsored by e-models yes uh yeah who else is in uh adrian david uh kenneth m uh northwest modeler tim bix te yeah te uh, tim bix said we must have had a milking stool before we had office chairs i really can't remember what i used to have i think i had like a you must you must have, must been, have you must have spent some time on the wooden dining table on the no no it was always it was always the desk in the room, but I think I had like a, a 1980s. You used to get those chairs for your kitchen that were like the chair bit like that and then metal hoop tube that went like that. And they were like extra tall because they were supposed to be sitting at a diner sh shelf in a kitchen, like a dinette chair. So it was like a wooden and metal tube thing. Yeah. But I think that didn't spin, but it did go backwards and forwards. So I used to do that rather than that. Yeah. Another thing, I yeah, my chair, not only does it sink, but, you know, there's a little catch underneath that if you take it out, it you can rock in it. Oh, yeah. Often that catch doesn't work and it catches you. So have you lost your anti-submarine action then? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I've just thought of a question as we're going down. Phil Davey, question. Any tips on painting the Hasekawa 168th camel in 120th scale? 
I'm going to oh. guess that's the biplane, not the animal. Yeah, I'm thinking it's a biplane or uh, there was a truck camel, wasn't there? Was it a truck? Uh, I would say keep in mind that those things are made of wood and canvas. So you want a proper matte finish on your on the non-metallic parts because they were just painted canvas, effectively. Yeah, uh, just I wouldn't have thought. Yeah, unless it is unless it is a camel, uh, when when it uh, it'll be all washes and highlights. Yeah, it'll be brown, <laughs> a brown yeah. wash, sand brown colour. highlights, yeah. sand colour. Yeah, if, if it's a biplane, it depends. If you want to do like a, a really nice, good condition biplane, then. Um, I was watching something today, and the, the, the guy's basic advice was make sure everything is really super matte. However, if you want to get like a brand new biplane, you can make sure that the wood parts have actually got a slight shine to them, as if they'd like been waxed and polished, and they're just they're ready installed, like the spurs and stuff. And the metallic parts, like the cowling over the front, if it's got cowling over the front of the engine, would often be just shiny metal. So that would benefit from some maybe depends on the plane. I can't I, to the top of my. If it's something with camel, yeah. that could have been painted or it could have been bare metal. So if it's bare metal, you could go with your C1 metalizer or your R-clad metallics. Mm, yeah. I, w I would Google it, but uh, I've got so many pages open, I'll probably lose everything else. Yes. So, uh, it's a very strange scale, 168. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, we did get a lot of questions right at the start as well. I saw them go up. Let's see if we can find them. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I'm looking at that. Sprinkler's Addict says, What are the two golden cups over my left shoulder? Oh, yeah, I forgot about these. These are the stands for the uh, U boat. Um, cup, yeah, there's two of them. Uh, what I've done with these is just applied some uh, true metal, some wax. What action going on? Yeah, uh, it's true metal wax, it's brilliant stuff. Just to uh, spread the black, give them a black uh, primer undercoat. Uh, put some of this on. This one's a steel one, actually. The, the brass one's in the cupboard. Uh, and then you just polish it off. Uh, we, when it first came out, I do mention it in the video, which is on its way, by the way, but um, there's a sound issue with it. Uh, I, do, I do mention in the video, when we first found these, we didn't quite know how to use them. The way to use them now is put it on, don't let it dry, just buff it, and it works brilliantly they, yeah do they look like brass do they look metallic they look more goldy than brass but that's your color's quite yeah that's, that's the color. Overlay, that's, so it that's could be just your camera yeah cool that's so good. That's, uh, that's yeah we had a question from chris but i'm not going to answer that yet uh, uh colin over at festa 67 workshop says question for fox are you getting the gundam hoodie uh somebody posted up earlier on a picture of a hoodie that looks like rx 782 Two things no because i couldn't wear it anywhere in public without kind of being really laughed at because i'm a 46 year old bloke with a massive beard it doesn't really work um and also you can't win the sweepstake bass be a question about gundam no, no so that gonna... doesn't count towards the sweepstake yeah yeah it's going to be an unsolicited mention hasn't it uh james chapman says fox where's jar jar my fiance would like to know why you don't like him um i'll show him in a bit and I shouldn't have to answer why I don't like Jar Jar Binks. If you have to ask, you need to go and sit on the naughty step for a bit and think about what you've done. <laughs> uh, Adrian Davis says, Fox, what's that on your shirt? It is the Haynes manual for a Zaku 2. Mm. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, it would, would be brilliant if it was a real Haynes <clears throat> manual. Talking about Haynes manuals, if anybody uh, has a works uh, bookshop uh, near them, uh, I got some workshop manuals out of there the other day. One was for the uh, Tiger tank. Uh, one was for the Sherman tank. Uh, and they were selling them off about five or each. It'd be worth pa if you pass it to works bookshop. Yeah. Even if you're not building them. Because it's not a model supplier, so we don't mind doing that. Even if you're not building them, it's worth popping in for uh, just yeah. reference. Uh, right. Uh, what else? We all better than buying them on eBay because if you buy on eBay, you've got to give your name and address to someone who may have a thing for axes. So you. Yeah. Uh, totally scale models. Yeah, that will be. Yeah, I have got you. I did get your email about the mug. Yeah. Uh, talking about the mugs as as yet. Mugtacular. Yes. Mug mug mugtacular. As yet, I haven't had confirmation that from the guys at the store that they're back in stock. Uh, they'll tell us where they are, but uh, if you have won a mug and haven't received it yet, we're still awaiting some stock. So mm -hmm. that's, where, that's where we're at. Uh, was it Paul Davy that asked about the camel? 
Uh, I've lost it. I've lost it. Yeah. Might have been. Because he says, no, sorry, bad information. It's a machine in Krieger type lunar vehicle, which is sci fi, and you wouldn't know what it was, Ted. Oh. Well, I'll still paint it, Matt, and use. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's like, uh, I don't know, actually. Um, sometimes if it's a heavy armor type thing, try using. Um, I've seen people get texture on their model to make it look like it's got texture to it, like pig iron type texture and i can't think what they used to do it but i've seen that done using like really coarse primers and just slapping them on what did they do ted slap it on yeah slap it on i've seen people use like really coarse like lumpy primers and, and just dab it on with a stippling brush to get that kind of really rough coarse metal effect if it's like one of the um really chunky little sort of dude in a mobile in a sort of suit thing i don't know that the vehicle off the top of my head. I know Machine and Krieger, but I don't know that vehicle off the top of my head. Mm. Uh, Chris, a uh, gross model, says he's got a Haynes manual for the Saturn V and the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. But it's only got six pages. Yeah, there's lots of them out there. I've, I've got one for the Volvo V70, if anybody wants it, because I don't have a V70 anymore. Yeah. Uh, oh. There is a main Haynes manual for men and women as well. I believe the man one is just like one page or something. <laughs> <laughs> it just says, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, 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 yep. Yeah. Uh, where are, where else have we? Uh, James Chapman says, no worries, she's already on the naughty step in relation to the why do I not like Jar Jar Binks. Uh, well, why do you not like Jar Jar Binks? Have I missed that? Never mind. Scott Sutherland says, could we hook her up with Fox Tim? But I don't know what that was in relation to. Uh, I've swapped my screens around this week. I've just tried a different format, so that's why I'm looking. Uh, at uh, a couple of people said, Mr. Surface of 500. I'm assuming that's in response to slapping on a really coarse... Uh, primer. I think um, Lincoln Wright did that with the really course. I've seen some other people do it as well. It's quite a good effect. Just for that kind of rough pig iron look. Uh, James Chapman says, which year is a V74? I can't remember, actually. I'll have to have a look. I can't remember what year mine was. Uh, it's the it's the, um, it's the the facelift one. It's the one with the rounded uh, lights and things like that, James. Uh, right, Joanna Hammond's in. Good evening, Joanna. Good evening. Yeah, Jamie Bort, uh He said he's got the hands manual for the century in the Red Bull F1 car. Okay. Yeah, they, yeah, they've yeah, they gone a lot. Yeah, they do a lot nowadays. Right, where else are we? Right, yes, uh, get your questions in. Uh, don't forget, you could, uh, did we say at the start, you can send them to ted at emodels.co.uk if you can't get in the chat. Yes, if you're not in the chat, uh, pop an email to ted at emodels.co.uk uh, if you're watching elsewhere. Uh, and he'll get your email, assuming his phone is plugged in and charged. Um, he will get the email. Uh, ask him any question you like. If we well, don't forget, we do do giveaways for stickers and mugs. Uh, and you can send us the question we ask for the giveaway. So it saves us having to think of a question because we're yeah. idiots and we're lazy. Um, so do send in your question. Make sure to include the answer. We will assume it's correct. We won't do any research because we don't. Uh, and you will you will get a sticker if we ask your question in the giveaway section. I'm just going to lock my screen so it doesn't keep shutting down. And I have to. Uh, no, that'll just drain your battery like nobody's business, though. Uh, yeah, we're well, just plugged in. Uh, drop your brightness down a bit. Uh, yeah. Uh, right. Uh, auto lock. Never. There we go. Right. We're on. We're up and running. Uh, there we go. Right. Uh, uh, scroll down. Joanna Hammond says she's stuck at the moment. She's waiting for things to dry, set, etc. There is nothing worse than when you've got to build on the go. And you do like, so when I'm filming videos and stuff, when I get to the point where I'm weathering with oils and enamels, it's really frustrating because I need to get episodes out as fast as possible. But you put the enamels on, it's like, right, I need to leave it for 24 hours now. Mm. And especially when it's that bit of the film where you want to like a 30 second segment saying, here's where I put the enamels on. And then the next segment, but you've got to wait a whole day. And it's like, oh. Yeah, that gets, yeah, that's the problem with filming bills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good fun to do. It's just, mm. uh, yeah, you think, right, I'll get, self, I'll get myself sat down tonight. I'll do a segment and I'll do some painting and I'll paint that. And then two minutes later, you're sat waiting. Yeah. That's the thing. Like That's why I like painting little miniatures and stuff is great because you can just constantly work on it and, and put films together. Doing proper gluey models and like with proper weathering is like, okay, the gloss coat needs 24 hours, then the oil paint coat needs 24 hours, and then the gunk wash needs five days, and then the enamel needs... Uh, yeah. Yes. Some people wonder why it takes a while to make a video. Depends what you're making. Uh, and on that note, Adrian Davis says, what has Ted and Fox been doing this week? He's taken over from Chris's... I know. 
Yeah. Chris, you better watch your seat, mate. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Once you're out of it, yeah. Once you start not turning up for work, yeah. yeah that's it. Yeah. Like Game of Thrones, man. Once you once you show weakness, you sit your toast. Yeah. You're yeah. dead on the next episode. You know what I mean? It's just. Yeah, we'll need to be having a word in the office when you come back. Yeah. yeah. Don't forget to feel like you, you know, return to work form and your 360 feedback form. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, but we hope you, 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 you the company cares about you yeah so what have you been doing this week fox uh this week i have been mostly i finished completely finished my little fallout wasteland warfare figures i'd already finished my little super mutant which you won't see and it'll be out of focus but i did the base for him i finished uh dog meat and i based him as well he's all based up and i finished nora who's now all painted up and uh, it's only like my fifth or sixth ever miniature figure that I've ever painted because I always avoided painting figures because I suck. And uh, I thought they came out not too bad. So I'm, I'm kind of getting the hang of painting little figures now. I'm getting really comfortable with it. At first, you're kind of really nervous. and You're like, oh, I can't, oh it's really small and I'm going to mess it up. But I think I'm starting to just edge into the zone now where I can just sit and enjoy the painting of a figure. So it's kind of a nice thing i also uh those of you who know me from other places know that i've been playing some elite dangerous me chris and paul have been playing some elite dangerous and chris downloaded and 3d printed uh some of the ships from elite dangerous so he printed out my uh, mark three cobra which i've painted up in my scheme the color scheme that i have in the game which is the kind of canadian flag so that's my little canadian mark three cobra from elite dangerous it's really sweet so i painted that up in an hour for fun and then I did receive a mystery package from Chris in which he sent me that. He also sent me this. What is it? Jar Jar Thinks. It's, the, it's Rodan's The Thinker, but with Jar Jar Binks' head. Ah, right. Another 3D print. So basically it's Jar Jar Binks with a butt. So <laughs> I don't know what is worse, that it's Jar Jar Binks and Jar Jar Binks is naked or that it's Jar Jar Binks and that's just bad enough, or that somebody actually went to the trouble of coming up with that and designing it. I, I don't know what's worse. So many conflicting emotions, but what I plan to do is what Chris suggested, which is get it sanded down, because it's a really nice 3D print, get it sanded down and paint it either in stone colours or maybe paint it in bronzy colours with the kind of um, verdigris corrosion that you get on bronze, so it looks like a weathered bronze statue. Hmm. But it's, it's Jar Jar Binks with the butt. It's not good. But it's brilliant. I love that. Even though I hate Jar Jar Binks. So, and of course, when he sent me the box, of course on it, it had a big thing stuck on the side saying, Jar Jar Binks Appreciation Society, President. <laughs> I get some very funny looks off my postman. Uh, yes. Yeah. The, the, the postman must, must visit your house quite a lot with all the strange passes and things that come through. Hmm. What about you, Ted? What have you been up to? Oh, other than that, I've not been doing much. I do need to crack on with the um, Skitter build for E-Models. I've got some last bits of weathering to do on that. I've not done anything in the last few weeks because I've been painting those Fallout miniatures. Last few bits of weathering to do on him. Then I've got to start on the figures, and then I've got to do the diorama, which means I've got to figure out what I'm going to do for a diorama. Ah, oh, right. Oh, yeah. Uh, so so you, you almost finished that, then? Just the uh, diorama? No, the vehicle's nearly done. I've just got a little bit of weathering to do on it. So then it's just got... I've got all the figures. I've got all the little figures primed and ready. Uh, I have a mess of figures. I might not use them all. But I've got them all. There's a few more. I can't hold all of them. There's a few more figures to go. Two guys for the vehicle and then three or four guys stood around. So I've got them all primed up and they're ready for painting. So there'll be an episode on figure painting. And then we'll do an episode on Tet Diorama. But I haven't figured out what I'm going to do on the diorama yet. So I've got to put, pull, pull that out of my butt somehow. Right. Uh, as for me uh i did promise last week that i'd get the u-boat video out yeah i did hope to get the u-boat video out but as you know it's had sound issues so this week i've been uh mostly uh dubbing uh or uh, voiceovers uh i know you think it's quite easy to do oh i'll just do a voiceover it'd be dead easy to do but no it doesn't work like that so i've had the, i've had the microphone all set up and uh, have you been using your like cool BBC jazz program presenter voice? You know, I tried doing that, but it didn't quite work. Because uh, so. what what the viewers might not know is that when you when because me and Ted have got the same microphone, it's a cardioid microphone. So when you're talking like this, it has a certain sound, but they're designed to be used close up. 
you're supposed to be right close to it. So when you get right close to it, you have to use your proper BBC voice, which is, Hello and welcome to BBC4. Today we're going to share a programme about cheese. You can't talk loud near a cardioid microphone because it, it goes wrong. So you have to have that real quiet announcer voice, and it's really quite hard. Yeah, yeah. Well, I tried that, but it just didn't seem to work with the video. You know, it didn't it didn't work right. So I just tried doing a, a, a normal voiceover. But then what you've got to do is watch the video, think about what you uh, think about, try and remember what you're doing, and try and not, not reproduce the words, but sort of describe what you're doing. So you get lots of hand gestures but no speech, so it doesn't seem to fit. So I've got to cut bits out and then go back and dub it again, then watch it again. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, uh, the, the, there are times when I've had, I can't do any more of this. I'll just leave it and go and come back to it. But yeah, we're getting there. We're nearly at the end now. So I mean, yeah. the, the two things I've learned is when you're doing that kind of thing, when you've got to, when you've got stuff where you've already recorded the audio and you've got to re-record it, um, what you have to do is like you're doing, you have to really cut a lot of stuff out. So literally a five minute segment on painting a thing, becomes 30 seconds of actually painting the thing and you just saying here i am painting the thing using this paint and this brush and this is the technique i'm using and then it cuts to the next bit you get you just have to cut out all the bits where you're talking but i always find that if you're doing a voiceover like that have some really quiet music in the background just like some yeah. i'm trying music to find some, I, i'm trying to find some nice soothing music that sort of i can fill in the, the quiet bits so as, as i'm doing something just to just something to go in the background yeah I'll but, but it, it is it is weird when you've got to record to a microphone like that and not just like when you're doing stuff like where you've got a, a lavalier microphone or an overhead microphone and you've got a proper close-up pickup mic like that if you've ever watched any of my little animated videos where it's like fox explaining things I did one on the Gumpler page and stuff. It's I sound different because it's scripted because I'm doing a voiceover. So it's like, it's really, it's a kind of different habit. You have to kind of pick up. You do take on, you kind of, I do, I find myself doing what my mum would call a telephone voice. Like when my mum answers the phone, she puts on a posh telephone voice. But, you know, a lot of people do that. And it's just weird. You kind of do that. You put on your posh microphone voice. Uh, yeah, but as I say, I thought I could just knock it out in 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, no. But it's not happening so no because you, you keep making fluffs and then you think about the fluffs yeah. and then you make more fluffs yeah, and fluff. yeah, your voice always is a right pain in the bum yeah you fluff it <laughs> and then it says do you want to keep your voice yeah do you want to keep your voice over nope start again um, yeah zanster says jazz presenter voice needs a turtleneck sweater mm. uh barkley says you'll soon be doing voiceover for disney ted toy story 4 yeah i could do that yeah i'll, I'll be a, i'll be an expert at it yeah. Nick Wise the Rum Gone Barker says, rather disturbingly, talking of cheese, Ted, check your messenger later. <laughs> okay. Oh. Uh, Chris points out that I said Gumpler voluntarily after 28 minutes, so I don't know who wins the sweepstake. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. Could be, yeah, could be, could be, yeah, could be mentioned quite a bit tonight. Uh, I don't David know. says, Ted, you have to be careful with background music, copyright. He can use my yeah. music, which is copyright free. Yeah, yeah. I just gotta find the right one. Yeah, Fox. Yeah, and when they, when 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 it gets pulled by YouTube, I can say Gutsy Fox. Yeah, he, I, it's he's, public domain, so. Yeah, I, I probably will use some of that actually. Yeah, yes. quite likes that. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I, I've got a lot of music that I wrote and composed, and it's like, why don't I just make it public domain so that people that do YouTube don't get pulled up every time they use it? So. Mm. Yeah, somebody did try it once though, didn't they? Somebody tried to claim it was theirs. And... Uh, no, the, the problem with making music public domain is that there's nothing to stop somebody then taking your music and putting it on a CD and selling it. Mm -hmm. So some of my music is in a couple of like mood music collection CDs that you can buy. Oh, you might, but, yeah, so we could hear it in a lift somewhere. Yeah, you could do. But the thing is, of course, they're, they're making money off it, which is fine. I can't stop them doing that because it's public domain. Uh, and when I first thought, I was like, oh, that's my music. You can't do that. And I was like, hang on, hang on. No. I made it public domain. They can do that. Oh, that was <laughs> move. So never mind. Uh, uh, right. Uh, yeah, I just Colin, uh, Colin won the. So after all that, Colin did win the sweepstake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we should actually do a, a proper sweepstake for a sticker or something, shouldn't we? Uh, right, right. I'm just going back through the chat. Pick up on where, uh, where we got up to. Uh, Joanna says she's got she, uh, she's got a gumpler to build for a uh, for a group build. Uh, Joanna, good girl. Yes, you've been uh, you've been touched by the by the gumpler thing. Yeah, he's going back now. Uh, her friend is trying is threatening to buy her the Bismarck. 
uh, trying to make me feel. Yeah, go for the Bismarck. Do the Bismarck. I, d- I do Earth. like the fact that Joanna has wildly varied taste. She's gone from she's gone from a star destroyer to a helicopter to a Gundam to a the Bismarck. Yeah. Is great. I like people that have this like I don't really care about a specific type of model. I just like yeah, models. That's it. Yeah, mix it up. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. If you've never tried it before, if you've always built one type of model tanks airplanes. Mm-hmm. You know, try something else. You'd be pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I'm getting old now, so I've I've lost that creative urge where I can just build anything. I'm like, no, I just want to build these things now. I'm old. <laughs> I'm like, I don't sit. I settle in a chair. So yeah. I'm getting to that I'm... age. Uh, one other thing about copyright music, by the way, Adrian. Bear in mind, any of my friends or colleagues who do YouTube, they know all about copyright music because I shout at them regularly because I know all about copyright music. So Ted would never put anything in there that would get him pulled because i'd shout at him before yeah. he tried uh, yeah there are one or two sites out there where you can find copyright music but you just need to check the little disclaimer underneath the music sometimes yeah. it says uh, uh it's you can listen to it but you can't use it yeah. uh, what, what's that i can't remember there's it. creative well there's there's proper copyright stuff basically if you're making a youtube video here's a little youtube 101 for you you're making a YouTube video. Do not have the TV or the radio on in the background. Your video will get pulled. Uh, do not use your favorite pop stars music because your video will get pulled. It's all copyright music. Find either public domain music, which is in the public domain and therefore nobody has the copyright and you can't get pulled for it. Or find Creative Commons music that's under a Creative Commons license where it's just like an attribution license where you just have to say music by such and such in your video or in the titles or in the description. And that's all I ask for. Uh, a lot of the music you hear on the Internet is by a guy called Kevin McLeod from a website called Incompetech.com. Uh, and he does a ton of music that is Creative Commons. You just need to give him a credit and you can use it however you want in commercial. Uh, you also need to make sure what you use is can be used in co- in uh, commercial videos as well as non-commercial videos uh, and some of these websites where they offer you pay us 10 pound a year and we'll let you use all our music they still get claims on them sometimes because it's the way it works so yeah it's it's a really twiddly issue to get round. just make sure you're not using something that somebody actually owns the rights to because your youtube video will get pulled potentially and three strikes and you're out your channel gets banned there you go because i know we've got a lot of budding youtubers in the in the chat and then they watch this so it's good advice yeah that's what also we... don't film portrait <laughs> yeah don't that's what it's all about yeah if you fancy doing youtube channels go out and do it yeah yeah you know, you might get one two viewers you might get thousands uh but it's the fun doing it it's I'm, I'm, I'm always surprised how many people that follow like me and you and other people that we follow who actually then start doing their own youtube stuff because it is really good fun don't yep. go in expecting to be a millionaire because you won't be. Um, but, you know, just go in expecting to have some fun. It's really, really good fun. It's hard work, but it's good fun. Yeah, keep it fun. Keep it interesting. People watch it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, back to the questions. Yes. Uh, Matty's Metal Detecting South Wales said he's uh, started practicing bush spray. Bush spraying. He bought a job lot of used matchbox Corgi model cars. Yeah, he could metal detect for them, couldn't he? Hmm. Um, yeah. Have we ever done that? Um no, I don't know that I've ever used uh, Matchbox or Corgi cars or die-cast cars for spraying, but yeah, you'll often find bits of models and things around that you just use as paint pigs just to practice on. Yeah, but yeah, that's the idea, practice. practice. I mean, if you've got a job like little Matchbox cars, it's absolutely fine. Good thing to work out little colours and stuff. Anything will do, really. You find a lot of people use spoons. Plastic yeah, spoons. 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 Yeah, I've, just got, I've just acquired a, a bag of spoons. These are my spoons. Oh, oh it's good. And they're quite good in two ways, because one, they're good for testing out colours anyway, uh, but also they're good for testing out colours on smooth, plastic, shiny surfaces. See how good a primer is. If a primer can stick to a spoon, it's going to be fine on your model. If it can't stick to a spoon, it's not a very good primer. Yeah, what I've said before as well, if you have a set of spoons to hand, when you've done your primer painting and you've finished, you've got a little bit left in the spray cup, spray a few spoons with it, because they'll come in handy for when you want to try a base colour on a particular coloured primer. And hmm. see what the effect is. So if you always got a couple handy, you can just whip one out, give it a spray, let it dry, and see if it's the colour that you want. Yeah. So. Um, Stream thirteen mentions, and I won't mention it in case people who aren't in chat haven't seen it. He throws out a little tiny bit of a spoiler for Ready Player One, but he mentions um, uh, a specific Gundam. I won't mention it for people that aren't watching and don't see chat. 
there's a i think there's a real grade or uh, i won't mention it no i've said it now i think there's a real grade in the in the e-model store go to emodels.co.uk forward slash gundam gumpler have a look on the menu there's a section for gumpler there yeah. is that that mobile suit in there go and have a look yeah there's yeah it's got a real yeah. grade one, i think i think uh, i don't think we've mentioned it in a few weeks but e-models are stocking gumpler yeah yeah yeah, but, yeah. Oh, lots, of, lots of nice kits in there <laughs> uh yeah uh jamie bourne says he's built it where's he gone i've lost it he's building what was he building he's has it moved a, yeah uh, anyway whatever he's building i think he was building a bradley or something he wants to know how much uh mud and weathering he should put on it as much as you want slap it on yeah um, yeah yeah. On. yeah you can never you, yeah it can never be too much but it can never be too little uh i always think less is more uh, some people will think the opposite. The more, the more they can slap on the bed, yes. uh, and yeah, it's just up to your own personal taste, really. That's all. Yeah. That's all. Uh, was it? Sorry, I was, I was totally not paying attention. What was the question? Was that about tap mud on a tap? Uh, yeah, he's. I found it now. He's building a Timia uh, M one one three. Oh yes, yes, yes. People, how much? Is that the Abrahams, Ted. Is that the Abrahams? Uh, I think uh, I'm not sure. The, the no. guys will tell us an M one one three. Not sure if it's uh, Abrahams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah just uh, the, the best way to think about how much weathering to do is just think what story do you want to tell yeah, where it's been yeah is it in your head canon for that model is it fresh out of the factory has it been in a, a muddy theater of combat for the last six months and so it's not had a chance to be cleaned up is it in a desert is it on is it maybe at a base so it gets a little bit of dust and dirt but it's regularly cleaned and maintained it's whatever you want. You could make it caked in mud if you wanted to. It's entirely yeah. up to you. You just the, the trick is if you can sit there and say the reason it looks like this is because of X, Y, and Z. This happened and then it was shot out <clears> and then it went through some mud. It's fine. Like whatever your story yeah. in your head is. Yeah, I'll, I'll find a picture of the real thing and just copy that. Yeah, just copy real life. Uh Adrian Davis says I have a pack of spoons, very good for eating food. Hmm. Who's spoon? I want to eat steak through a straw, so I agree with that. Uh, uh, Matty's Metal Detecting South Wales says he's, uh, on his metal models, he's been using an automotive etch primer. You do need to use something that etches in on metal, because or a specific metal primer, because normal primers won't really... Uh, right, right, uh, Stream 13 does clarify that the mobile suit he mentioned that's in Ready Play 1 is actually in the trailer, so that's fine. It's the RX-78 too, so it's not really a spoiler then. I think there is a real grade RX-78 too in... The e models website, go and have a look. Uh, There's a lot of other gun player in there as well, so yeah, yeah. Uh, people are all talking about putting music into videos and things like that, yeah. Yes, um, somebody mentioned something about music. Uh, do do do, somebody mentioned that they used their own music in a video and it got pulled. Yeah, and they have to explain. Yes, I, I've had that. I actually had a piece, I did my recording of the third Brandenburg concerto, which was done on Moog synthesizer. And I got a copyright claim that I had to dispute because the copyright claim was for a recording of an actual chamber orchestra playing the third Brandenburg and Church. I'm like, the same piece of music, but mine is on a synthesizer and it's not, a, it's a public domain piece of music. So shut up. And they turned, they, they kill the claim. It was fine. No, so you do no, get that sometimes. No, no, on that note, you might be able to help me. You might or help me and help others. If, if I chose the Brandenburg concerto mm. and slowed it down, Mm. would that would that be if if it was from that chamber orchestra playing the brandenburg concerto but i slowed it down nope would it be still nope. the same piece of music it, it might get through the filters and not get picked but technically it's still copyright infringement because it may not be a copyrighted piece of music but it's a copyrighted recording right okay. if it's a live recording it's copyright to the people that recorded the orchestra that played it wow so you might not get away with that. But if you find if you if you can find one that actually says this is public domain, then you're fine. If it's public domain recording of an orchestra playing a piece of music, then you're fine. It's public domain. The music itself is public domain. So Holst's The Planets is public domain because he's been dead for a trillion years. But the the you know the the the, the English Philharmonic Orchestra playing it isn't. Yeah, if, if I if I use recording of the, the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra performing it last year, that's copyrighted. If it's from them performing it in 1928, 
it's probably public domain that recorded because they're all dead and it's over 75 years however if it's specifically listed in public domain archives as public domain because there are a lot out there um it's fine i a lot of the music i use like my my my, my sort of um national anthems that i use in my videos they're all from a public domain website so mm -hmm. yeah so now you know let's yeah yeah that, we learn something every week in e-models mm. uh, e-models live stream yeah right let's have a look at uh, one or two questions that have come in if that's if i've got any questions that come in uh have you any questions that come in yeah <laughs> fx models and things says you're looking a bit lost today ted chris thinks you look a little bit tired yeah, uh, it's you know, gym today. Have you not had your gym I, fix? Yeah, I, I have found an opportunity though at work that I could perhaps take some bits and pieces to denub, paint, uh, glue together. Uh, in fact, I'll just take the workbench. Yeah, huh. It's not always that busy. You yeah. think, so you could build a U boat on a boat? I could, I could build a U boat on a boat. Yeah. 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 And when we could build a U boat out at sea, sort of. Not perhaps out. in the future when we get Wi Fi, I might be able to do a live stream from the boat, from the middle of Windermere. Yeah, building something. Yeah. Dave Barker says, you think he looks lost now? You want to see him when he moves to the new house, comes home from work and goes to his old house? <laughs> yes, I wait that day for coming. I've been coming to this house for 25 years. I think that I'll be coming home one night and turning left instead of turning right. You'll be driving home, you'll be like, oh. Yeah, yeah I'll, be sat -nav, I'll be still following the sat-nav, go home. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot to reprogram my sat-nav. Can you make me a cup of tea anyway? Yeah, yeah. yeah try my key in the door. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's this uh, this is actually a question from Dave Barker, uh, and it's for you guys as well out there, really. Uh, dear Ted Fox and the little fellow with a beard, uh, who well, isn't he? Yes, uh, he's having a clean. Uh, Dave's having a clean up of his bench, and he realised how how old some of his paints, uh, how old some of his paints are. Uh, mainly Citadel ones from the eighties. Uh, what's the oldest thing you still use? Uh, have you got any old paints? Uh, I think I've got some. Do under there? Yeah, because Dave, I think, recently found some like 1980 Citadel paints in his paint collection, and yeah. they're still good. Uh, the oldest thing I've got is I've got some Tamir paints that I bought in like 1989, I think 1990, the big old pots. But I think the oldest thing I've got and this is where me and Ted both got off camera now, so. Uh, is is i'm just having a look i'm just having a look to see what i've got the oldest thing i've got is this crappy old unbranded brush that i probably bought in about 1985 from my local model shop mm. and i don't think i've used it in like 20 years no yeah. but oh, that, yeah that's about 30 years old that brush something i think something like that that's quite old well, I can't find them. I thought I had them in my box of uh, enamel paints. I've got, I've actually got around here somewhere. Oh, they might be here. Is some Airfix paints. Remember them? So I missed all that because I was rummaging. What? Airfix paints. Airfix with the enamel pots. No, can't get it. In. Yeah, they're, they're... totally yeah. scalped. I've got some really old enamel paints. Good God. Uh, there's, there's one. Yeah, there's one. They fix enamel. That's in the days before they had colour paints. Everything was black yeah. and white. It's just, yeah, you can only get two colours, black and white. <laughs> yeah, just like the movies. Yeah, that's, that's actually the white one. Yep. Totally scale model says that he is the oldest thing that he uses. Yeah. Um, Jamie Bones says old Humbrol tin. Zazda says he's got a couple of those old Airfix ones in square tall glass jars. Yeah. Uh, Northwest no, Modeler says she's 44 and in bed next to me. Or oh, I'm sensing somebody moving to the sofa shortly. Sergeant Bones says I've got a tester's bottle from 77. Still use it as zinc chromate green. Zinc chromate. See, I did that in the in the in the skitter build. I tell you so. I tell you so. However old these are, I think are quite old. They're still usable. Yeah, they still work. Well, they're made of dinosaurs, aren't they? Because they're all like petrochemicals. So, yeah. Humbrol authentic colours. Uh, BR, I wrote all that. BR. BR. That's what I used to paint trains. Yeah, Chris says all his model stuff is only a couple of years old. He does have some old paint at his parents' house somewhere, 30 years old. Well, his parents are 30 years old. Wow. <laughs> uh, Simon D says airfix paint. Joanna Hammond says gross. All my stuff is just a couple of months old. Yep, you're going to be going a couple of months. Bless you. Uh, mm -hmm. Griff MJ says some original MIG powders. 
Do, do, do. Sprugloo says, I've got a full tube of Humbrol cement unopened from 1989. That will no longer be cement. That'll be a block. Yeah. That, yeah. that stuff used to go solid after a month. Yeah. yeah. Did you keep a pin in the end of it? When you broke the end off, you had to put yeah. a pin in it. In the days before we realised that tube cements are the worst products that humans have ever made. Yeah. Uh, Tony Blackwell says, Humbrol enamels brought out an authentic colours series in the 1970s. Yeah, that's when they moved from just... Yeah, there's probably some in that box there from that series as yeah. well. Yeah, but but I tell you something though, it might be old, but sometimes it's a go-to box. You know, you think I just need that particular colour. I know, I'll have a look in my box, and it's sometimes there. I actually need to buy some proper. I've actually not got any proper enamel paints. I've got enamel weathering products, but I need to get some black because I need to do some reverse washes on some of my gun plicates at some point. So I need to get some some black enamel, and it'll be the first time in. Good God, almost 40 years that I've used an enamel paint. I mean, a, an actual paint paint. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, uh, it's still a bit, a lot of people still use it. A lot of people yeah. still use one, but one time it was all you could get. Steve Watt says, mm, probably got lots of harmful levels of lead in it. I don't know if old enamels used to have lead in them. No, I don't oh, think lead paint. Uh, no, I don't think, I don't think they ever had levels of lead. Not in enamel. Uh, uh, Tony Blackwell says he's got a Tamiya glue pen. Oh, uh, God, I have one of those. That's going back to the 90s, that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I, I guess a lot of people, as Phil Kett says there, he's only got back into the hobby a few years ago, and a lot of the old stuff probably got chucked out, so mm. probably starting afresh. I think it just comes with being, um, I think that's... Old. Yeah, old. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not mince words, Bones. So yeah. what you really think. Old and cheap, because as a modeler, we never throw anything away, do we? Yeah. I mean, that's that's how I've got some of my really old Tamiya paints in that thing there. There's uh, not many of them left now, because they've all kind of gone lumpy and hard. But I used to make models like in the mid to late 80s, and in the 90s, I was a big model maker. And then I stopped for like, well, in the mid 90s, maybe I stopped for about 20 years. And then went back to it, but I still had lots of tins of my old paints and stuff. There's still tins of old brushes and things sitting around uh, mm. here and there. And there's still some kits in the loft that I'm not going to go anywhere near because they're terrible kits. But there's still a, there's still a USS Voyager up there in the loft somewhere. It's never going to get made. Uh, <laughs> Dave Barker says, now nah, the lead paint's okay. Just look at Ted. He's still here. Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. Think, yeah. Stream 13 says, he doesn't use enamels for his reverse washes. I always go with the lacquers first, then acrylics on top. But how do you remove the acrylic? Enamels, you can put it on there and you just get a cotton bulb with a tiny bit of mineral spirits and just wipe it off. Even if it's been there for a day, acrylics aren't easy to take off. Try it with enamels. Yeah. Try it with, like, if you're doing, say, uh, something that was, say, black with white piping, try painting the whole thing white, either in your lacquers or with, with an acrylic gloss coat. Let that fully cure. Go over it, airbrush over your black enamel. Give it a few hours to dry, maybe 24 hours, and then get your little kind of cotton bud or bit of sponge or whatever and just dampen it with thinners and just wipe off the the bits that are raised. And that's a good way to do it. A, a, a reverse wash. I've never done it. I, I need, I've got a, a Kashashashatria that I need to paint, and that's got the black and white piping on it. So I'll, I'll do that when I do that. Yeah. yeah. But it's yeah. just easier than acrylics because acrylics are a pig to remove. So um, I don't know. They're not. Them, them are. Uh, enamels, the old humbrol enamels, but like rock, you can't shift them. Once yeah. you try. Uh, Sergeant Bone says, "Are oh, lacquers not enamels? Are oh, not lacquers enamels? No, lacquers are enamels are petrochemical based, mm. like oils. It, lacquers are uh, not solvents. Yeah. yeah, they're solvent based. And then you've got acrylics, which are either water based or, in some cases, alcohol based. Mm -hmm. So oils and enamels are the same thing, not the same thing, but the very the same chemical base." based on your mineral spirits and things like that. Um, it, lacquers are just toxic chemicals. Uh, oh, oh, how the modelling scene has moved on. Bro. Yes. Tins, tins of, yeah. And you could, yeah, tins of humble paint that you could, after a while, you could never get the lid back on. Yep. Because it would all clog up around the, around the edge. Always, always like Tamiya paints after, you know, some of those paints in there. We've got a thing in the kitchen downstairs. It's one of those things that's got like about six rings that get go in concentrically. It's got two handles. And it's designed for putting over a jar over the lid and then twisting the lid off. So it's got little grippy things like that. It's never been used for opening jars in the kitchen. It only ever gets used to open old Tamiya pots because they've seized up and you're like, oh. and you do this for enough, the way your hand hurts, you get the hand burn and you're like, no, I'm going to get the thing out. There you go. 
Uh, my, my tip for opening stuck to me of lids is to put them in the door jam. Put them in the door jam, shut the door on it, twist it off, twist it off. Paint. And how many multicolored door jams do you have, Ted? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't do it on the kitchen door, do it in the shed door. It's a skill you have to develop. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, somebody said that lead paint's not harmful. Look at Ted. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's why I'm out of focus, Steve. Very black says the old Airfix bottles of enamel paints were held to open. The problem with those little tin pots as well is that when you do try and open them, of course, in those days it was like it's like a little mini paint pot, like a Dulux paint. So you get a little spoon or something. And how many times did you do that? And it went boing, off like that, and onto your desk, paint side down. Yeah, uh, all, every all single time. Little circles of different coloured paint all over your desk. Yeah, or if you're really, if you're really unlucky you've got a cream color carpet with a bright red circle on it because your lid went <laughs> onto the carpet and then you're in trouble and you're on the naughty step yeah, sleeping it's on like the couch. Butter toast isn't it it always lands paint side down yeah uh, <laughs> uh right yeah any more any more questions from you guys out there we're getting it yeah uh, we get uh, we get the bit uh stuck for questions here i've got lots of questions for the giveaways but we've no questions about modeling or anything else remember your question doesn't have to be about modeling if you're new here you know what we talk about. We talk about anything here. Uh, Tim Bix says he's off to watch The Phantom Menace. Don't go and watch The Phantom Menace. Uh, not, it doesn't exist. It's not. Don't go and watch it. Just yeah. do something more productive with your time, like, I don't know, breathe, look at the wall. It's much more interesting. Don't go and watch The Phantom Menace. Yeah, we're here to I think he's being silly, though, because he says, love Star Trek, me, Dr. Spock is brilliant. Yeah, I think he's winding you up, Ted. Uh, right. I don't think we know anyone that would knowingly go and watch The Phantom Menace and then tell people about it. Stream 13 says he's back. His PC crashed yet. I'm going to wave my Jar Jar at you. Jar Jar's butt, even worse. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, that, could, be, yeah. <sighs> that could be a horrible part to paint when you get round to Tony Blackwell just said, did you, you, it pulls you up on something you just said and said, you put paint on your toast. Yeah, well. He yeah. said the toast always lands paint inside down. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, uh, yeah, it could get worse when you've got your toast next to your paint desk and a paint tin lands on the toast. Yes. Uh, Sorry, right. I was being messaged by somebody. Yeah, I've got a message. Uh, no, it, was from, it was from Virgin Media, so it's nothing to do with uh, this at all. Uh, Tommy and me, says Dave, his son Tommy and him just watched The Last Jedi. It's not a bad film. I like The Last Jedi. I didn't think it was that bad. There was that blue milk scene, and I was like, oh. But other than that, it was a good film. I've never seen I it. enjoyed it. Ted's like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I have a question, says Joanna Hammond. Good. I'm being Chris tonight, aren't I? Uh, based on what I've produced so far, which bits do I need to focus on improving? I suppose I'm asking for constructive criticism on what I can do better. Uh, this would be really for the things she's posted in various chats and forums about her works. Um I just think it's a matter of continuing and you'll get, yeah, it sounds like a get out clause, but continuing what you're doing and you'll get better at everything, really. Hmm. I, I, it's, it's one of those things that, because um, I, I always give the same advice, whether it's painting models or doing drawings, is keep in mind that what you think you've done that's brilliant now in five years time you'll look back and say good god was that what i thought was brilliant because you'll have moved on and evolved and learned purely through practicing practicing there's an old joke guy walks up to me and says how do i get to carnegie hall and he says practice practice so mm. it's an old joke but it's true the there's no point really being too critical of your work right now especially if you've only just started with the hobby because there's so many things you won't yet, yearn, let, uh, yet have learned. Like I look back now and I look at the Colonial Viper video I did for E-Models two or three years ago when I'd just come back into the hobby after a 20-year break. And I look at it now and I think, oh, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that now. Oh, I'd, I'd do that differently. Mm. And it's just learning. So um, from what I've seen of Joanna so far, it's really, really good. Um, yeah. And it's like, wow, really? That's yeah. I, th I think unless you're taking a video of it to look back on, uh, and um, watch it in a period of time. Take some photographs of all your work now, and as you progress, you'll be like Fox, and you'll look back at it and think, "Yeah, I could do that better now," I'm, or "I am doing that better than I used to do that because I've learned something else." Hmm. Um, it, it's it's also a case of because you've just started, you haven't hit a long 
the lines of something that you hate doing. You get to a stage in a build and you think, oh, no, I've got to do that now. Like, like for me, it's canopies in aircraft. Uh, for some people, it might be tank wheels or it might be tracks. Uh, and once you get to that stage and you think, well, oh, I dread this piece, uh, that's when you need to build on that bit because you can build on it and know that, you can, yeah, I could do canopies now. I'm, I'm yeah. quite happy with it. I'm not dreading it anymore. Yeah, and as FX models and things says in chat, he always thinks as long as you've enjoyed doing what it that little I'll read that again in English. You get like me now. Yes. Hey, I say he, of course FX models could be a he or a she. FX model says that says I always think as long as you've enjoyed doing it, what does it matter? Yeah, exactly. Treat everything as 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 just fun. Don't be serious about it. I, I, I'm really impressed with the work she's done so far with the Star Destroyer and other bits and the, the helicopter she's working on at the minute. Like especially considering that she self-admitted that she's only kind of really just started and it's like wow really so yeah so um it's pretty impressive stuff when you see ted and i so often see people that say this is my first ever model and they show this model that's got a beautiful paint job and you're like wow yeah there is there's sometimes that happens and it's like wow but there's always stuff to learn there's always techniques you won't know about that you'll pick up later on um just, just don't worry too much have fun just keep yeah. doing what you're doing because it's really good and um keep looking at other people's work don't compare yourself to other work but steal their ideas yeah. best way to work with art steal people's ideas but don't compare yourself to them yeah and it's a matter of it's a matter of finishing model and sitting back and looking at it and saying yeah what what could i do better or what would i like to learn to do better mm. because fox and i and chris uh, we're not we're not experts. We're not, no, we're still learning. And there's, there's a question actually just popped up that kind of feeds to that. Because uh, Simon D says, question Fox, would you still use smoke wash as you did on the Viper video? I used a, a wash of thin Tamiya smoke, uh, which I was doing at the time because I hadn't started using things like enamel weathering products. So now I might not. There's been a few occasions where I thought I could do a smoke wash here with thin Tamiya smoke. And I'm like, no, I, I want to do the enamels because they're more they were flexible um so yeah you, techniques change all the time uh some things you do now you'll look back on in a few years and go god i'm not doing that i wouldn't do that again why would i why would i use that technique which is terrible and i can use this technique which is far yeah, better we we we'll learn something else as, as we progress yeah because we pinch ideas from you guys as well yeah mm -hmm. oh, if you're a create if you're any kind of creative artist be it drawing writing making models making videos making anything you will steal stuff. It's, it's what we do. We steal things. We don't do it blatantly. You know, I don't steal things blatantly, but you steal inspiration, you steal ideas, and you steal, you watch somebody do something in a video. Oh, that's a good, I didn't know that technique. Let me try that out. Brilliant. There you go. <laughs> so, you know, it's just, um, it's yeah. one of those things. It's like I, when I started doing gunk washes, I'd never seen anybody else do a gunk wash ever. And I just came up, I pulled it out of my backside and was like, I'll just try this. Brilliant, it works. So I put it in a video and then suddenly everybody's doing it. But I didn't know that it was already an established technique that had been used for decades anyway. But I just kind of made it up. And then I saw other people do the same thing and call it a gunk wash. I'm like, okay. Uh, there's always that kind of feeding on each other that happens. So don't, don't, don't worry too much about, this is to everybody. Don't worry too much about, am I any good? Is this good? Am I doing it right? Just when you're learning the best thing to do is look at a model kit and say that looks cool i want to make that and then make it sure and then when you're finished go to the shop and say that looks cool i want to make that and then make it and don't worry about learning the techniques too much don't think it through just go in and be instinctive and you will start picking up different techniques because when you're doing a kit you'll you'll go online and you'll watch videos of other people doing it and you'll pick up techniques don't think about what you're doing just do it it's like weathering don't think about weathering just slap it on like ted would say yeah slap, get slap it on yeah, don't overthink it if you start thinking too much should i do this should i do that should i put this amount of weathering on should i make it this color should, what if i paint this red when in real life it was green don't worry about it just mm. have fun yeah but yeah and as we said don't restrict yourself to one genre of building uh one genre of uh, uh, it. Yeah, uh, uh, challenge yourself yeah i don't like doing tanks right i'll get a tank and i'll do a tank but don't you know t take inspiration from others but whatever you do try not to compare yourself to others because that is the death knell 
it's hard to do and i do it and ted does it and you know everybody does it i watch videos now and i think oh that guy's so much better than me i wish i could do that mm. and to someone who's just starting out that can really be like a death sentence oh i can't I'm, i'll never do that oh, i'm not gonna bother don't don't try not to do that look at it and say that's incredible i want to be able to do that yeah and then yeah. make in, that your game as well in this game as well and that's what this program is about is for you guys to come and ask that's what you've got to do you can ask people out there uh like fox ted chris uh Tom, I everybody. <laughs> we're only too happy to tell and teach that's what we're here for yeah, that, that is what we do. That's, you know, every video I make is a how to do that. Well, apart from the ones that involve food is a how to do this video. Yeah. Uh, every, every video Ted makes is a how to do this. And that's my entire reason for doing YouTube is to teach people what I do. I'm no master and I'm no genius. I, I'm not the best model maker in the world, but I like showing how I do stuff. And I like the things I can do. I've learned that they're not quite as complicated as you think they are. And that's my entire role is to say, I'm going to show you how to do a thing because you might think it's really complicated, but it's not. Yeah. Uh, and you'll learn when you're doing things like commissions and things like that over the years, you learn that you can look at a model and because you know the techniques, you can kind of apply some criticism to it or praise to it. You, there's no mystery there. But if you then... If I look at a badly painted model, I can say, well, this is what I would have changed in that because this is where it's gone wrong. But I can show a badly painted model to somebody who knows nothing about model making or painting, and it might be the best looking thing to them because they don't know how it works. So just I forgot my actual point that was making that sentence because it went on for so long. <laughs> but, yeah, that's what we do. We teach because yeah. that's what we're here for. And, and, and it's not just us. Just ask away. Ask any of the modeler. And yeah. They're more than happy, usually they're more than happy to sort of uh, tell you in great detail how they've yeah. done such a thing. It's like it's like learning to ride a bike. Don't think about learning to ride a bike. Just fall off it a few times and eventually you'll stop falling off it. Uh -huh. If you think about it, you'll just fall off it all the time. Just just, just don't think about it. Uh, uh, Jamie Bourne says, uh, uh, it's just uh, just a quick question. Uh, I do have another question here on e-models. E e-models e email. Uh, just a quick question. He's re he's recently used Humbro Matte Coat and it came out gloss. Uh, how would I sort it? Uh, shake the bottle and try yes. again. Uh, that's probably why it's come out gloss. It happened to me once uh, with that very product, Humbro Matte. Uh, I didn't shake it enough. Yeah, two pieces of advice are when you get a matte varnish, it's generally a gloss varnish with matting agents in it. Mm. So shake the living carp out of it. That's Just the trick. Try um, if you, we actually, when we painted my my real life car, um, we got some of the U-Pole, it was supposed to have a matte finish. So we got some of the U-Pole matte clear coat. We didn't shake it enough on the first coat. So half of my car is matte. And half of my car is slightly shiny because we goofed and we didn't shake the stuff. So matte coats are generally just gloss varnishes with matting agent. It's like Citadel shades. If you get Agrax Earthshade and you apply it straight on a model and don't shake it, it'll come out glossy because you need to shake the matte agent. They're just they're just glossy inks with matting agent in. Yeah. Um, but also the other thing I would say is don't use some raw matte coat. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. It's quite good. Plenty of all that though. It depends what you can get, what you can afford, what you can get, but there's plenty more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you if you're air brushing if you if you if you're brushing it on um there are much better matte products out there like the vallejo matte varnishes the mig matte varnishes yeah uh, if you're airbrushing it the same if it, you're rattle canning it yeah, i was just going to say if you, if you can't airbrush try a rattle can yeah the best matte varnish i've ever used ever and this is weird for me to say it but it is a humbrol product it's the humbrol 49 matte varnish acrylic in a rattle can i've got tons of them I go into my local art store, my local store that's just down the road, and I clear them out every few months. You need to make sure it says acrylic. You need to make sure it says matte 49, because they do enamel as well. Best matte varnish ever. I've never had that go wrong. The thing with me is I can't I can't airbrush matte varnishes. I suck at it, and I need to practice that. Also available for beer bottles, by the way. Uh, but yeah, if you're brushing or airbrushing, then things like the, the Vallejo matte varnishes, the ultra matte finish is supposed to be very good uh the uh, the mig stuff is very good if you're airbrushing the trick is to use very very thin coats and build it up slowly if you just spray it on in a thick coat it'll come out satin yeah uh yeah uh 
Right, I just re- uh, just while you were chatting away, I was reading back through the questions and Clearman seventy seven. Any tips for weathering British World War Two sand vehicles, specifically the Thunder models, Scammel? Yeah, lovely kit, nice Scammel. Um, I did sand uh, weathering. Whoa. Uh, sand weathering. I did some sand weathering on my. Um, I can't remember where it was. You know, MRAP. Yeah, yeah, on my Jeep, uh, on the E models. Um, yeah, what was it? It was an MRAP. It wasn't a Jeep. Yeah, it was an MRAP. Yeah. It was an Oshkosh. I can't remember the name of the. What was the company called that built it? Osh, uh, it, it was Oshkosh. a Oshkosh. It was Oshkosh. Main. Oshkosh. Yes. If you have a look on the uh, E models Oshkosh video build, I do some sand weathering on that, and it's all mm-hmm. down to pigments. Yeah. Of, yeah, just using sand pigments. I can't find them in the room to draw. I've got, I mean, I've got. There's two types you can use. You've got pigments, which are just powders. Mm-hmm. And you've also got um, actual liquid products. I haven't got here. I've got, I haven't got any here actually at all. I've got a, an ammo by make dark earth, which is just a powder. Yeah. Which you can apply all over the model and you can either, you can either mix it into matte varnish to make it look lumpy or you can just put it on and then get some thinner and work it in. But they've also got light sandy colors, which are great because they dry matte. The one thing you can do is cover the model in where you want the dirt to be cover it in the sandy colored pigment it can come off so all you do is get a big flat brush and some thinner on it and just wipe it on it it becomes a wash flex in the recesses and then you can build that up slowly yeah uh, yeah i've got some here I've got some sand pigments mig, mig ones uh just different colors i don't know if you can pick out the difference in the colors on the video camera uh, just apply them. I, I just apply them with a brush, scrub them on, and it sort of taints the surface. Uh, Fox, when I got the Oshkosh, Fox was wondering how I was going to do the sand weathering on a sand coloured vehicle. Uh, but yeah, if you're using different colours, just scrub it, yeah. scrub it in, and then use pigment fixer to fix it on. Just yeah. often, if you could just wipe it on, drop a pigment fixer, capillary action will feed through all the pigments and it'll stick to the surface. It's uh, best on a matte surface as well. Yeah, yeah, use about surface here. And then just f- feed it with more pigments until you get the effect you want. Do it in the tyres or uh, all the treads and things like that. Um, yeah, I haven't got any. Uh, do it in the tyres for the treads. Fix it. Pigment fix is one of the best things. Uh, yep. I did used to use to be a X20 actually as a pigment fixer. Yep. Uh, uh, Dave Wise Rung on Barker says, Ted, just call it your hotchpotch and you'll never forget. <laughs> well, I did me hotchpotch, my Jeep. Yeah, where's my arch potch? Uh, arch potch, yeah, I forgot. I calling it a Jeep's like a bit like... Oh, the arch potch. Yeah, calling it a Jeep's like saying you've got a Ford Cavalier. So, yeah. <laughs> not quite how it works. Yeah, yeah. well, go on, go on have a look at the video. Yeah, uh, it's obviously a bit towards the end. There's not many uh, episodes in that one because it was an easy build. Mm. Yeah. So Big that's build. Are you ever going to do a small build, Ted? Sorry, what? Are you ever going to do a small build? I'm going to do a small build next. Um, this week, we're going to make this single figure <laughs> in 134 scale. Yeah. That's, what, I'll do, what I'll do next, I think I will do the trumpeter. Um, Careful now. Careful now before you say this. Yeah, I'm going to do the trumpeter astute submarine. I think it's only got nine parts. Uh, what scale the, is it? Uh, I can't remember the scale. It is on the website. It's, uh, yeah, it's just come out in town. Um, now I do apologise because I missed the question, and we'll go to what's his story in a minute. Um, but somebody did ask earlier on; it, it was passed. But somebody said, "Is anybody releasing any large scale cars?" And I just wanted to say, you might need to clarify whether you mean large scale or small scale, because large scale cars would be like that big. Small yeah. scale cars would be big, like one twenty fourth or one sixteenth scale. Don't get confused. So, do you mean tiny little things that you get for modern railways that are this big? Or do you mean big, massive car kits? Yeah. Not that I know any are coming up, but just for people in chat, if they wanted to answer, you might want to clarify if you mean like 116 scale, 124 scale, 18 scale, which are all small scale cars, or 1144, 1300 scale, which are all large scale cars. People get confused by the large and small. Uh, yeah, uh, right. Just what a question from email before we go across to what's in store. Mm-hmm. Chris Brouchin, uh I'm wiggling my chair. Sorry, folks. That's real. Uh, no, that's, well, Tell that's, me in chat if I start wiggling my chair. That, that's more of a comment. That's more of a comment. If we both steal things, are we safe if we ever meet you? We don't steal things. We um, recycle. Yeah, we're recycling them. Yeah, recycle. We, we, yeah, yeah. we always ask. We always get permission, and we recycle. Yeah. Uh, reuse, recycle. 
Yes. Right, yeah, here's a question Short from Sean Johnson. Hi, Ted and Fox. Uh, he's painting a truck which has a white gloss top coat. Which colour primer is best to use? White. Uh, white, yeah. Yeah. Use Absolutely. white. Yeah. Yes. Because white is the worst colour to paint with if you've got anything other than white or cream colour underneath it. Yeah. You could use like a sandy colour, a very light sandy colour or a cream colour if you wanted to be a bit warm. Yeah. Because white is very transparent and the colour underneath will show through. So if you paint white over black, it'll come out like a sort of cold grey and you'll put a million coats on. Uh, uh, you could uh, use a go on, Ted, you say. A little tip uh, before you put your white primer on, put a dot, just a dot of red in it, just to make it a hint of pink, and then you could see where the primer is and where the top coat is. Yes, I was going to say, don't just do white primer and white paint because you'll have a nightmare. No, tint your tint your primer a little bit. I learned very quickly when I did a model once. I was like, I only had some white primer. I was like, put it on right now. I need to paint this model white. Oh. Which bits have I not painted yet? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Try, try to move it around in the light to see where. <laughs> is this bit wet or is that primer? And then you, when you come to do other bits later on, it's like you've got this nice smooth pet and then a lumpy bit where it's primer. And you're like, oh. <laughs> so yeah, always tint your primer a little bit. Uh, yep, that's yep. Yeah, so that's okay. Yeah, all right. Uh, I think that's all the questions we've got in the emails. Uh, cool. any, anything else before you guys? You oh, see what's in store? Should we go and have a look at what's in store? Yeah, right, Chris says we can get Fox's mum to go tell him off for moving the chair. She'll tell me off later anyway. Although I can't hear the iPad downstairs, so she might not be watching. She might be watching Murder She Wrote. Although this time of night it's probably Lewis. Is it? Or is it? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Could be Murder She Wrote. No. Or she's played with you. One of the three. Oh, Murder She Wrote was on at seven o'clock, wasn't it? I don't know. Hmm? I don't know. Now, anyway. Uh, yeah, it might be actually. <clears throat> yeah, w whilst we're doing what's in store, uh, I won't be able to see the chat, so Fox will have to tell me. So if you've got any questions, yes, uh, yeah, you can ask. Right, I've got to do all the pressing of buttons. I'll be the chat trolley dolly. Don't press the big button, Ted. Don't press the one that says stop broadcast. Yes. Right. But I do press the one that says screen share. Then yeah. I press the one. You're locked on you as well. Oh, no, I forgot that bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to remind you. <laughs> that right. says new tricks, probably now. Mum doesn't want, I love new tricks, but Mum doesn't watch new tricks. So uh, it's it's murder she wrote, um, heartbeat. Uh, uh, I only watch heartbeat because I like the music in it. I can't stand the music. I think uh, '60s music is terrible, but uh, I quite like it. Um, <laughs> that just alienated a million people now. Yeah, murder she wrote, heartbeat, Lewis and Devon Morse, Midsummer Murders, which has the worst music of any television program ever. It should never use a theremin in a TV program. Anyway, we're getting off topic here. Move on. <laughs> Uh, right, right. I've got to lock it on me. That's it. Lock, lock it on the. I can't make a rhyme out of that. Now I press the screen share button. Then I press the share button. Then it goes more yeah. like that. Infinity. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. I did say if you saw the emails, e models, um, sort of a blurb earlier on in the day. I did say we're going to be, do a bit of nostalgia this evening. Uh, but I changed my mind. We're not doing all nostalgia. We're doing a little bit though. Uh, remember? Does anybody remember these? The Airfix one seventy second scale. Uh, what is the official theme for tonight then, Ted? Uh, there isn't one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I have to stand up. All right. Yeah. We messed that joke up, didn't we? <laughs> we messed it up. Yeah, we forgot there was supposed to be a whole kind of... Never mind. Moving on. Completely forgot that joke. Uh... Oh, mum is watching downstairs. I can hear O Canada blaring from the iPad downstairs. <laughs> Yeah, uh, a bit of nostalgia. I think these have been re-released in 172nd, haven't they? Because I'm sure that the ones that we used to play with as kids were 135 scale. No, no, they were 170. They were tiny. Uh, they, yeah, tiny but they were dudes the on stands. Well, but they were just bigger in the same poses. No, 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 never. There, there were some bigger ones, but I think the, the little ones we had were 172nd. Right, well, let's, let's have a look at the, let's have a look at the poses. There's, does it not say the scale on it? Uh, this is 172nd. Let's have a look. Yeah, and he, yeah, here's the pauses. Remember? Uh, yeah, they all look kind of familiar. Yes, yeah. there's always the guy lying down with the, the guy with the brain gun lying down. I can't yeah. remember. Yeah, I can't remember the uh, the gun on the mount here, but uh, I remember the the mine layer and the the, the skipper. Yeah, uh, skipper running along there. I can't remember that guy either with the binoculars. No, I think I do. I think there were there were there were smaller scale ones that you bigger figures that you used to yeah, get. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it's probably just I could just remember the bigger scale one uh, or the yeah. larger, the larger. Well, the way you can tell these are really old is because the artwork on the box is just it's just that proper like 
battle action comics kind of artwork. Yeah, yeah. Original stuff. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you could paint these, because remember they were like a vinyl, weren't they? They were quite difficult to apply paint to. But yeah, they were kind of like, well, it's like the figures I got in my 172nd U-boat, which was a really nice U-boat kit from Avail, but the figures were beautifully sculpted, but in vinyl, so you, you, you threw them away because they were unpaintable. Yeah, I think these, they, yeah, they, these could be added straight to your diorama, or some of the tabletop guys might actually use them for wargaming. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you could use them for... I, I never actually think about it now. I don't really know who the market for these figures was because there was no real... There was a tabletop game, wargaming scene then, but it was for, like, middle-aged men. Hmm. Yeah, I, I do remember, though, that, yeah, there's, 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 there's the artwork. As you say, it's a real battle comic, isn't it? Yeah, battle action comics. I did try and find it because there's always, like, a blood... There's always the officer with the shorts and the pistol, the Webley, yeah, and then well, the, the proper yeah. sort of you know, rough-and-tumble Tommy with his uh, yeah. the infield and his bayonet out. Uh, you can almost see the speech bloom coming out, can't you? With "Okay, Fritz, take this." Yes. Uh, uh, that's, yeah. That's uh, yeah. I, I think that I did remember about using them for was I used to shoot them with the air pistol. Yeah. Not that we condone such activities, but <laughs> we do. We do. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Things. Times have moved on now. Mm. Uh, so yeah. So that's the British Eighth Army. Now then, if you have the British Eighth Army, obviously they need some enemies, so you've got to go and get the Africa Corps. Yeah. yeah, there it is. Now, the, uh, the Brits were always charging across the open desert, weren't they? And the Germans were dug in. Yeah, yeah this is kind of a really boring painting for the German dudes. They're just like sat in their trench. Yeah. But yes, I, I recognize straight away the guy with the MG42 who's crawling along the ground. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. There should be a guy with a style handgun out, I think. Yeah. possibly yeah uh, so yeah while every while all the while the rest of his troop are fending off the advancing eighth army there's a guy digging a hole mm, of course he's probably yeah. digging the latrine it's real as a minute <laughs> yeah. he's got to go somewhere uh he's got to go somewhere yeah so yeah so you, yeah if you've got the eighth army you've got to get the africa corps for them to stand up against yeah dave barker says uh he remembers that uh, seymour bobbington said he had them a long time ago always managed to bend the pointy bits yeah, uh, yeah. When you got them out of the box, the, the pointy bits were never straight anyway, were yeah. they? Rob B says commando comic, and that's what we were saying about the battle action. I was always battle action comics, not commando me. Uh, uh, for, for you, the war is over, Tommy. Donut und Blitzen. Yeah. Achtung, spit fire. Dave Barker says you can still get commando comic books. We'll, uh, we're at DeWay Smith and at train station shops for some strange reason. I've got one somewhere. I'm desperately trying to find it. Yeah, I've got some. It's that proper scratchy yeah. black and white art that's absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I think if you grew up in the 70s and 80s, you must have a battle action comic around the house somewhere. Yeah, Tony Blackwell says, never ask a man where he's going in the desert with a shovel. <laughs> he's either burying someone or... Uh, uh, yes, yeah, so, yeah, that's the uh, bit of nostalgia for this week. The Airfix set, the 172nd Africa Corps and the 8th Army. Bit of fun for a fiver. That's his mistake. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get when the grandkids come round, get the get the uh, get the Africa core out, get the Eighth Army out, and have a battle on the t on the coffee table. Yeah, get a marble going backwards and forth as the back and the forth as the the thing that kills people. Uh, we used to, me and my friend would have like an army each, and we just flick a marble, and that would take people out. Yeah, it was the nineteen seventies. That's what we. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, well, they never stood up anyway, did they? Because used to no. the bases were on like flumpy, plush nineteen seventies carpet. Oh, uh, no, no, yeah, right. We'll go on to something else. Uh, this one really sort of made me chuckle when I found it. <laughs> something you don't really see often as a model the Hazagawa 135 Hitachi Vibratory Combined Roller. Yeah, excuse me, do you have a, a Hitachi Vibratory Combined Roller, please? Does it have the vibratory action? Does it say on the box realistic vibratory action included? <laughs> vibratory action. Oh, let's have a look in the box. Uh, oh, there's a man with it as well. Well, you uh, get a little fella. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like the fact it's actually a, a Japanese guy driving it. You can tell by the face and the helmet and the fact yeah. it's obviously yeah. a piece uh, of and the very smart shirt and tie underneath. Yes. Yeah. So there'd be no weathering on this piece of material, especially if you do it with a Japanese driver, because it wouldn't have any weathering on. It would be perfect. No, they'd probably get off and polish it before they went home. Yes, and of course, you know, if they roll, if they use their vibratory rolling action on the road, the road would be perfect. Mm, because yeah. the Japanese do everything perfectly. That's what yeah. they do. Did you, did you see that news report where a hole opened in the road in Japan? Oh, it happens. Yeah, it happens a few times. Uh, well, within about a day, they'd filled it in and had traffic going over it again. Yeah. I watched the video where I was walking down the street and just went into a hole. It's like, well, ah, ha, ha, hello. 
Uh, yeah, so yeah, uh, uh, something a little bit different. If you're into your, um... is that a male or a female driver? Some people are saying it looks like a woman, not a man. Both. I can't see in the picture. Uh, it looks like he's got eyeliner on. It could be a lady. Uh, could be a lady. No reason why it couldn't be. No. Yeah. Yeah. Joanna Hammond says, "Of course, it has weathering. You just put it in a dystopian, crazy Japanese future." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, a really unusual topic. I thought it was quite fun, this, to just to be. Uh, it's not something, yeah, as we said before, if you, if you build tanks and aircraft, change your genre and build something different. You'd be surprised, actually, how many kits there are of just standard civilian plant. Ah, like right. Rollers and dig. Oh, it is a lady. Yeah, it is a lady. Like rollers and diggers and excavators. There's tons of them. Yeah. I know Vincent, who I don't think is in chat tonight, he's making a digger at the moment, like a JCB type thing or a cat. Yeah, I know I've seen cranes and things like that. Yes. Yeah. Like but there's actually a big market for like just normal urban civilian yeah. earthwork equipment. You can have a building site. Yeah. yeah. Put spikes on the roller, says Phil Lewis. Uh -huh. yeah, so I find, yeah. Cool. Yeah, it looks quite detailed as well. It has a gawa. I know that they're uh, quite well known for the detail. Uh, in, well, don't, don't forget, of course, this will have been painted by a Japanese modeler, so it will be the more perfect than we could ever achieve in our entire lifetime. Yeah, the Japanese model that's got a heartbeat of once a second. Yeah, that could paint an entire landscape scene on a grain of rice, because Japan. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> no, no, no model maker will ever be as good as a Japanese model maker. <laughs> it's the law. Yeah. No, I'm just looking at the detail in this. Like, there's uh, hydraulic pipes and everything, and switches and buttons. does it actually say if it gets a, a if it has a vibratory effect uh yeah well, yeah i bet it doesn't <laughs> god look at that dashboard holy cow yeah. cool right yeah well wow there's more pictures lots more pictures mm. touchy vibratory combined roller is zc 50c dash five yes it's a very long complex name for a road roller uh so yeah uh and i think i've just figured out the question for next week's giveaway <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, we'll close this before we, we get ourselves into some weathering on that painting. Yeah. It's not correct. <laughs> yeah, right, we'll close this before we get ourselves into trouble now. Right? Yes. Uh, we'll move on. Uh, well, uh, the next thing we have is. Da -da -da -da. Yes. Oh, we had to throw one in. Because... About time we had a gumpler going on. Yeah, we had to throw one in because it's ages since we've seen. Seen. Yes. Um, so I, I picked a gumpler for Ted because he wouldn't know what. Yeah, I thinking. wouldn't know. So I had to ask uh, Fox. Uh, yes, I thought I'd uh, I'd pick the the Bandai 100, 1, 100 scale Master Grade Charles Zaku version two. Uh, those of you who know your gumpler law, it's a bog standard Zaku, but it's souped up to have three times the speed and power. And it's uh, Charles Aznable. It's his personal Zaku, which is always in shades of pink and orange. It's a Master Grade kit, so it's one one hundred scale. It's the classic compatriot to your rx 78 2 gundam uh the master grades are beautiful kits they come with a full inner frame and all the armor that goes around the edge and lots of angled joints and you can pivot all the arms it's fully jointed and articulated uh and they're just wonderful kits they're pre-colored and snap fit or push fit is a better term mm -hmm. uh, but don't let that put you off if your experience of push fit kits is the occasional revel offering you've never done a push fit kit bandai has the best engineering of any model making company um, they are divine kits. Now, this is an older kit. It's not a newer release, uh, but it's it's reasonably new. It's not not the original original, uh, but it's a really nice master grade kit. Lots of intricate detail. Uh, you can go to town painting the inner frame. You can have panels off to, as if it's been worked on. You do get the little pilot figure, if I remember rightly, the little chart as an able who's down there at the bottom. Oh, yeah. uh, I don't know if you get the little sort of scissor lift thing. I don't think you might get that. I wouldn't be in the picture otherwise, but I didn't know you did. But it just gives you an idea of how big these vehicles are supposed to be that Charles Nable stood next to it, and he's this little tiny speck in the corner. So, so how, can... yeah, for, for us, us non gumpler guys, how big is what scale would he be in then? Uh, it's 1 100 scale. All ah, right. Yes, Master Grades are always 1 100 scale. Uh, if you've never done a gumpler before, um, give it a try. They are incredible fun. They say there's no glue in required, they fit together beautifully, they're fantastically engineered. So all the all the there's all flexibility in all the joints. You can pose them and paint them as you want. And the beauty of a Zaku is as well, if you do it as Charles Zaku, it's gonna be nice and shiny. If you do it as a bog standard green Zaku or any other colour scheme, because this is the same as every other Zaku, um, you can weather the crap out of it. Because I like to think they're like, apart from Charles, which is all souped up, 
The bog standard grunt suit Zaku is like the knackered Russian tank of the of the Principality of Zeon. Mm. So you can have a lot of fun with that. Yeah, I must admit, yeah, Fox did convince me to go and get one. I I got a, a, a small one. Yeah, and, you got uh, you got um, an Exia. Yeah, I, I built it with Skylar, my seven year old granddaughter, and she thought it was brilliant. Yeah, could go together in an afternoon. Yeah, uh, Scott Sutherland says it's him doing the digger, by the way, the JCB thing, not Vincent. My apologies. Uh, Teddy Blackwell says Zaku's a better stream, says Hart. Ryan Riley says woohoo. Zazda says three times more shine. Adrian <laughs> David, Transformer, is it Fox? Uh, <laughs> Bob Bington says, ooh, a Transformer. Stream 13 says Zig Zeon. Uh, Phil Lewis says, is that a naked canine next to it? <laughs> it looks like it's like a scissor lift. Uh. Uh, Wayne Haywood says he's working on his first master grade, and Lord Barkley the third to me says, "How tall is it?" Uh, well, it's one one hundred scale, so it's. I don't know how tall the actual kit is though. They're usually about this big. Mm. That doesn't really help, does it? Have I got a master grade sitting around? Yeah, I, I just read it uh, uh, while you're while you're on there. I was just reading through the description that uh, has been put on the um, uh, description in the. Uh, on the web page and uh, it tells you we've just talked about grade guides and there's a little bit of a description there about different grades if you've never built one guys yes um, i wrote it so yes put a little guide in there master grade master grade uh is the sort of the third one up from the basic you get high grade then master grade the second one up uh but you get the full internal frame you get the pilot inside uh, and loads and loads of exquisite detail on the inner frame so you can you can assemble it with the armor on or off like maybe it's it's wrecked and you've got armor lying around everywhere. They're great fun. And they're just a, the great fun builds because there's no glue and you don't have to glue them. And they're just great. They're, they're beautifully designed. Treat If you've never done a Gumpler, treat yourself to a Master Grade at least once. Mm -hmm. You don't like it, you don't like it. If you don't enjoy it, you're weird, but <laughs> that's fine. We'll move on from that one. But yeah, you'll have a lot of fun. And you, as soon as you make your first Bandai Master Grade or any kind of Gumpler kit, you'll go back to normal models wishing that they had the same quality as Bandai kits. Trust me on that. Mm. Yep. Even glue kits. I wish they had the same attention to quality and, and engineering as Bandai. Uh, but not everybody does. So, yeah, if you do get one. It's yeah. locked on Ted, by the way. That's cool because it's he's showing what's in store. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. If you do build one, yeah, take a picture of it and chuck it in the. Uh, yeah. in I'll, show the you, I'll show you my estimate of how big it is. Yeah. Then come back to me after the what's in store. Yeah. We'll move on to the next one then. Uh, if somebody bit off the wall this one i've not seen this before uh fox hadn't seen it either uh mm. a master box now master box builds some great figures mm, they do uh, this is the 124th edge of the universe everything is under control everything is under control gromit it's under control nothing to see here move along uh, yeah i did some little research on this and master box they do some really fantastic figures uh there is a series they do called edge of the universe which i think are in the process of being released and they're just little collections of these sort of slightly sci-fi-esque 124 scale figures. And now I don't know in this kit if I think in this kit, I suspect I think you get the guy leaning on the bar. I don't know if you get the little guy next to him. I think it's it might be both, but I'm not sure. No, if, if, if you have built these kits, I know about these kits. More in, in groups in, in separate packs. Mm. I think it's just the guy stood leaning on the bar. But looking at the, the the things I've seen for it, it's a beautifully sculpted figure. It's kind of a sci-fi, slightly cyberpunkish, made-up thing. Yeah, just thought, just thought it was a little bit different, just to show you. Uh, Nine pound forty and forty-five. Yeah. Uh, everything is under control. And there's also another one as well, uh, the Master Box. Uh, uh, it's a female in this one. Uh, and the edge of the universe. Yeah, flesh tones. Yeah, flesh tones. But the thing is, they're like it's like nine pound forty-five. So if you wanted to get into figure modeling, uh, you know, big figure modeling, not like tabletop miniature size of 135, but if you want to have a go at a, uh, a good figure model, and they are they are really nice models that come from Masterbox. They're really nice figures. Um, £9.45, that's like two cups of coffee from Starbucks. Give it a go. You could spend weeks painting it because flesh, as Ted knows, flesh, flesh is tricky. It's uh, challenging. Uh, and but, yeah, do they do great sculpts? Yeah, well. they're big, nice big figures, and they've got loads of detail. They're slightly sci fi ish. Yeah. Um, uh, and speaking of sci fi, last one of the evening, uh, we have to show you this one the Morbius 132nd Battlestar Galactic Classic Cylon Raider. Uh, <laughs> no, you won't know what that noise means, Ted. I don't. 
No. Yeah. <laughs> the, old, the old Battlestar Galactic series may be terrible now when you look at it, but the Cylon Raiders were mint, and they still look mint. They're much better than the ones in the new reboot series. They're proper ships. I just think can't go a... wrong with the Cylon Raider. Mobius, Mobius do some very, very nice kits. The decals are a bit, yeah, but there's not a lot of decals in this kit. And the decals that are in this kit, a lot of them you could replace with painting anyway. Yeah. So I've always wanted a, a, a Cylon Raider kit, and nobody ever made one until Mobius came out with it. And this is actually quite a big kit. It does come out quite large. Uh, yeah, is, is there a uh, scope for lighting and things in this? Uh, yep, I think there is. Uh, I think. I'm not sure. I can't remember if it's a single molded piece because the, the, the cockpit canopy is like slatted. And I can't remember if you can see through it into the cockpit or not or if it's just a solid piece. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look at the comments. Uh, a few people say the Master Box figures are very good. Yeah, four pound eighty for a cup of coffee. Not yeah, you've not been to my local my local coffee shop. Uh, I'll stop sharing. I'll come back to you. You can um, to show us uh, a little bit more on that. Um, yeah, my local coffee shop. You pay like almost four quid for a coffee for that. It's like really. Do mm. um, do. Built it, got it. Says Rob B. Looks fab. Is that the Cylon Raider or the the figure? Uh, Phil Kett says built both the Viper and the modern Cylon Raider, but not that one. It's the classic one. Mm. Uh, oh, yes, for the lighting, not a solid cockpit, says Rob B. Right. Okay. Yeah, Silent Raider, but nobody ever really made a good kit of it, and for a long time didn't have any kits. Um, and I've got us, I've got us, oh, blurry Ted. I've got a soft spot for Mobius kits. I'm not. Um, they do do some very nice kits. Uh, some very, very nice kits. Like I said, the decals are a bit, hmm. They're not the best in the world, but their kits themselves are fantastic. Uh, for those who are asking, the, the Zaku model kit, at a rough guess, would be about. About maybe that tall compared to a can of humbro about probably about the that tall or move but mobile suits vary in height it's about the same it should be around about 18 meters in real life so 118 meters divided by 100 there you go yeah cool good uh right where are we up to any more questions coming in on uh the chat before we go and have a look and start giving things away uh hmm uh yeah Gross, but yeah, I, I was blurry, but I've come back up all right now. Dave Wise room with a bar because it's like people paying one ninety nine for a bottle of smart water. I'm glad I'm stupid and drink it out of the tap. What are we talking about? Water. Uh, yeah, yeah, price price of um coffee. Oh yes. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like nah. My local coffee shop, I'm like I don't think so. Coffee costs <laughs> more than a pint. Yeah. Does that include a ticket to Peru to pull the be pull the beans? Yeah. Oh. I thought you said polar beans then. I'm like, what's a polar bean? Pol yeah, yeah, pick the beans. Uh, <laughs> polar beans, like a polar bear made out of beans. Uh, Chris Belch is. Just so everybody knows, it did take Ted some rehearsals to say Cylon correctly. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I had it go through my head. <laughs> it was nearly a colonic raider, but. <laughs> yes, let's not, uh, the less we talk about the colonic raider, the better. <laughs> uh, Edward. Let's move on from that hastily, I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, uh, Chris Balchin says, Hello, Fox's mum. Ted, can I have a free mug, please? You can try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to try, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> if you don't ask, you never know, do you? Mm. Uh, Steve uh, Watts says, In wine, there's wisdom. In water, there's bacteria. Mm -hmm. I made the mistake today, uh, the other day of reading an article that dis discussed... It was something like the 10 places in your house that are actually disease factories that you didn't realize were disease factories full of bacteria and all kinds of nastiness. And I was like, yeah, I wish I hadn't read that now. <laughs> I won't I won't discuss it because I might give people worries. But um, there are places in your house that you wouldn't think were just made of disease and, and nastiness. Uh, I don't. Uh, uh, yeah. I dread to think. Yeah. Uh, right, should we give some things away? Is it time? Yeah. Oh, should we do? Well, do you want to do last week's giveaway first? Yeah, we'll do last week's giveaway. Hang on, I'll go and find what it was first. Now you've come out of locked screen and screen share. I'll let you go back into screen share. <laughs> right, I've just got to get rid of a few things. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And that one. And that one. And that one. Uh, yeah. Well, right, I'll come back to you. Dave Barker says, "Drink rum." When was the last time you noticed a fish getting out of the water to have a pee? Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't. Yeah, that's why I don't swim in the sea because fish got the toilet in. Oh, right. Screen share again. Mm. Share again. Right. This is what we're giving away. This is what we gave away last week because it remember it was the hundredth anniversary of the RAF. Last yes. Week. Uh, so we decided to give away uh, the Ravel set of uh, British legends. Uh, the three kits in one here. Mm. Uh, one set of six. Yeah, a box with three leg ends in it. Yeah. Uh, um, the Hurricane Spitfire and the Lancaster Bomber. Yeah. Uh, right. And so, uh, once again, before the show started, uh, we picked a name from the random picker. Name picker randomly picked. Craig David. What? Well, well, <laughs> <laughs> yes now i can't again we had to retry my mind because because we asked you to write down a sound last week and every time we do one of these we come to the comments the next week and think what the hell was the question i can't remember now because <laughs> of course it's just a made-up nonsense <clears throat> yeah so. the sound was uh to make a uh, what's what's the what's the word for the descriptive sound uh what was the onomatopoeia for onomatopoeia that's yeah I must write that down. I must write that down with a little thing above the, my, my screen. Yeah, good, good luck trying to spell it. Yeah, I must write it down where, where it reminds me it's Monday. I'll put it next to that. Yeah. Yes. But I think if, I think we asked you to write down the sound of a Lancaster flying over very low. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, the sound of a Lancaster flying over is... Well, it is in the war films anyway. Yeah. Well, we need, actually need about 25 minutes to do the whole getting louder and louder thing. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so we, well, the random picker, name picker thingy, what's it, uh, picked a name, and the name it picked this week was, uh, uh, yeah, hang on, I have to come back to do this bit, don't I? Yeah, we need to see your face, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, just if I'm not cheating, yeah, you can see it uh, when I announce the name. But <laughs> You're not cheating, you're just reading it out. <laughs> yeah. Nothing going on here, I'm just reading it off this card. Yeah. Right, I'm not making and, it up. And, yeah, uh, and the envelope that I've just just have had handed to me. Thank you very much. The one that says British Gas on the front. Yeah. Uh, no yeah. leak. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what number comment it was this week, but the winner was the, with the sound. Brrrm. Yeah. Yep. Was Stuart C. Yep. So Stuart C, you're the winner of that fantastic Revel kit. Well done, well done, well done. Well done, well done, Stuart C. Stuart C for Charlie. We don't know what the surname is. It's just yeah. Stuart C. So, so, Stuart C. 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 The surname could just be C. Could be. Could be. Yeah. So all you need to do is mail ted at emodels.co.uk yes. and tell us, remind me what you've won. Yeah. So Because I, it's not us that pick it off the shelf. It's the guys in store and they won't have a clue what you've won. So. Because once, once I turn, once I press the stop broadcast button on here, I completely forget what's been said. Yeah. I mean, he wouldn't remember what we were giving away unless, unless I forced him to write it down. <laughs> yeah. And he often yeah, forgets yeah, to... Yeah. He, this is yeah. Teddy who often forgets to do the giveaway completely anyway. Yeah. Yeah, and you have to write it down all style with a biro. Yeah. Some yeah. some viewers may not realise that occasionally when we do a show where there's no giveaway, we actually had a giveaway. We just didn't <laughs> do it because someone forgot. Yeah. We get to the end of the show and I'm like, did yeah, we well, have a giveaway? And Ted's yeah. like, oh. Yeah. Ted, you didn't do the giveaway this week. <laughs> Fudge. Uh, so we did. He's got it set up and everything. You just forget all about it. Yeah. So yeah. Right. Yeah. So yep. So that's the winner. That's the winner of last week's giveaway. So we'll do a giveaway this week of a uh, sticker. Should we do a sticker first? Yeah, we'll do a sticker first. I have a question lined up for the actual giveaway. Giveaway. Yeah. As I say, if I read your question out and you don't want a sticker because you've got loads of them, but you can have a sticker anyway, just let me know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the, yeah. So the, the person that asked... The model sticker. Yeah, now to be found affixed to MV Swap on Windmere. Yes. <laughs> Was that testing out the 3D option there, Ted? Uh, uh, right, uh, right. So uh, should I give a quick... Uh, you've got a question, have you? No, no I'll, I'll do one for the actual giveaway giveaway. All oh, right, okay. Yeah. What we'll do is, um, just for anybody who's never watched before or doesn't know, or, or isn't in chat right now, uh, we do a sticker and a mug giveaway for people in the chat. So if you're watching on emodels.co.uk forward slash live, I'm saying this while Ted is fumbling through his emails. Um, if you're watching on YouTube or somewhere else where there is no chat and you want to be in with a chance to win a sticker or a mug, then click on the little YouTube icon in the bottom right of the player. And that will take you to the YouTube page where you can see the live chat and you yeah. can join in. Um, what we'll do is Ted will read out a question sent to us by one of you guys. You will win a sticker for having your question read out. 
like I said at the start, we don't know if the answer is correct or not correct. So if it's incorrect, it's not our problem. It's not our fault. Don't blame us. We just assume that the person sending the question knows the right answer. Uh, yeah. Ted will read out the question. Don't answer until he says go. Everybody's already, already saying 42. Don't answer until he says go. Uh, and remember that we see the chat differently to you. You see the chat tailored to you. We see the actual first answer that YouTube received. So it won't look the same. We'll pick the first one that we see on the list. And it's yeah. I'm assuming it's not Dunkel Geld or 42 and definitely not Jar Jar. No, it's not. But yes. But Abraham's. Yeah. But so, yeah. So wait till Ted says go. Somebody, Although at this point, I don't know when we can distinguish between the real answers and the silly answers. Yeah, but somebody's been fairly close already. <laughs> they already. Oh, wow. Yeah. There you go, then. Ah, uh, right. Uh, I've lost it. Hang on. Oh, after all that. Oh, oh, right, here it goes. Are. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's a question that we do quite often, really. And it's a question from Adrian. Uh, Walker's Crisps. What colour, what uh, flavour, what colour, what flavour has Adrian got on his bench this evening? Go. What flavour of Walker's crisps has Adrian, Adrian David, David Adrian got on his bench? David. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I did that once, didn't I? I actually had some crisps on my desk earlier on. Ah. Well, whether by the time he sent me this email, he might have eaten them. Yeah, but what we have to assume that their what, answer is correct. Yeah. What empty packet is on his desk? Uh, we've got blue, green, beef and onion, mm -hmm. cheese and onion, cheese and onion, red, prawn cocktail, cheese and onion. That's a vinegar, that's a flavor. Salt and vinegar, blue, S&V, salt and vinegar, red, Ooh. marmite, plain, yeah. cheese and onion, prawn cocktail, salt and vinegarter. Oh, there we go, Chris Smith. Yeah, we've got to win it. Chris Smith, well done. Smoky bacon. Smoky bacon. Mm, so if I it's like not smoky bacon, have a word with Adrian David. We'll send you yeah. in. So, Adrian, send if uh, if you've not got it already for any reason, send Ted an email. Oh, he's got your email address. He can get your address off you. Yep. Send him your address. Uh, who won it? I've forgotten already. Chris. Chris Smith. Is yes. Drop an email to ted at emodels.co.uk with your name and address. Uh huh. Name and address. I have to ask a question, by the way. Mm -hmm. Here's a question for you How is it that chicken flavor crisps taste nothing like any form of chicken you'll ever eat in your entire life, but every brand of chicken flavor crisps? Has the same taste how do they all how do they all manage to not replicate chicken at all but all manage to have the same flavor how do they do that mm, chicken yeah. crisps any brand of chicken crisp tastes the same as any other brand of chicken crisps but they all taste equally wrong uh, and why do they always repeat on you yeah uh, uh, yeah you cheese and onion but you don't get the aftertaste do you, you no know, chicken chicken ones do yeah, they always do that but yeah chicken crisps always taste the same but they never taste like chicken. So how do all these companies get it equally wrong? Really weird. Chris Smith says, woohoo, cheers, guys. Yes, yeah. Send us your email, email uh, sorry, your, your address, ted at emodels.co.uk. Ted you know Scales it? model says molecular science. Yes, yeah, because they can. Organic chemistry. Darn you, orgasmic chemically. <laughs> uh, so well done. Yeah. Right, well, well do, the, should we do a mug giveaway? Yeah, have we got mugs in stock yet? I don't I don't know. I haven't heard from James yet. Mug giveaway. Where the way? I don't know if they've got them in stock yet, so you might be waiting a while for your mug to turn up. Yeah. They're yeah. collating all the winners, we hope. Yeah, usually you usually are um, right. yeah, yeah. Store usually put names on back orders because yes. James, stock you are you are collating the names of the winners, aren't you, James? Yes, James, you are. <laughs> <laughs> uh so yes, it might take a while to get to you because they've got to get them first. Yeah. So well, once they get them in, we'll get them straight out to you. Uh, right. Um, so the question for the mug, same again. We'll take the first answer that we see. Uh, and we'll assume that the answer to the question is correct. Yeah. Just got to find one. <laughs> if somebody says, what is the, you know, the, what is the, the valent, what is the atomic weight of neutronium? And they put the answer as pink. Then we'll, will they take that as the correct answer? <laughs> Uh, right, you'll have to tell me if we did this one last week. I don't think we did. Uh, yeah, I think we did. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a bad move. <laughs> oh, no, it's a different one. Uh, ah. Yeah, it's a different, if it was the same person, but a different question. There you go. Uh, you can tell by the words they use. Yeah, it's from GA Presswood. I've got that, I worked that bit out. Uh, what does now, this may take a bit of Googling, so it's fastest finger. Fastest finger on the button. Yeah, Google, so have you all got Google up in the, running in the background? 
Um, what does ABS stand for, as in ABS plastic? Go. I tried to learn that once and I couldn't. Yeah. I, I'm you've, not got, you've now got to read the chat going past really fast. For a really <laughs> long yeah, I'm not too fussed about the spelling, but what does ABS stand for? Uh, I can't even see it and I can read it here. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to bring it up on my Google so I can yeah, chat. I've, yeah, I've said go, haven't I? Yeah, everybody's Googling now. What does yeah, ABS stand that? That's what I love about when it's a Google one. Uh, no, it's not anti-lock breaking system. Uh, as in, as in ABS plastic. Hmm. I love it when you Google one. It's like the, you say go, and there's just silence from the chat for about <laughs> yeah. two minutes. Uh, yeah, another bacon sandwich. Ooh, another bacon. Uh, there we go. Acrylic like nitrile butadiene styrene. Says That's it. The one, yes. Uh, was that cut and paste? Do you think, or did she? Ah, actually... uh, quite possibly. Yeah, hell of a thing. At least I can pronounce it. Acrylo nitrile butadiene styria. I did learn that once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, every oh, we've got Rody Hobby actually tried to spell it out, which is good. He didn't just copy and paste it. Yeah, oh. I he's put acrylatril butadiene styrene. So extra props to Roby, who actually just tried to write it out. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, it's one of them questions that might come in handy in a pub quiz. Yes, know. yes. So, so well done, well done, Joanna. Uh, we'll get you yeah, the mug. That's Mug. Yes, sent off for a win. Griff MJ says bugger lost again. Yeah, so we expect to see lots of pictures featuring a mug. Yes. Yeah, a mug on the workbench, you know, sort of tasteful pictures. Tasteful pictures of the mug just in the corner of the in the corner of your cutting mat. Yeah. Plastic and things like that. Yeah. Uh, never mind, Griff. Uh, yeah, try again next week. Yeah, there's always, always a chance. There's always a chance. Always a chance. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, folks, it's a bit of fun. It's just a mug and a sticker. That's yep, yep, you're a mug and a sticker. Yeah, you're, you're a mug and a sticker. Yeah, right. Thank you very much. Right, uh, what we're going to do now? Don't, don't forget, of course, when they are back in stock, eventually. Uh, can I hear myself on your speakers? Yeah. Can you hear me? Oh, go on. I thought I could hear myself on your speakers then. Um, don't forget when they are back in stock eventually, assuming we haven't actually given them all away in competitions, um, you can get uh, mugs and stickers when you place orders. Yeah. Uh, you can order the mugs through the store, and if you place an order with them, you can just ask them to include a sticker. Mm -hmm. Stick a sticker in my box, please, and they'll, they'll do it for you. Yeah, it's good. Uh, and the mugs come with free delivery. Mm. If you want to... Yeah, uh, uh, put, put a few quid out and uh, get yourself a mug to free delivery. Mm. Uh, right. What now? Uh, right. any, more, any more questions? Final call for any questions, please. Well, there is there is the other giveaway that you've forgotten about, isn't there? Yeah, we're going to do that. Oh, okay. I just wanted to make sure I hadn't forgotten about it because I know what you like, Ted. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a special giveaway this week. Isn't it? Mm hmm. We're going to have a super uh, special giveaway this week. We have given, uh, well, not really. It's just a giveaway. Every giveaway is special, Ted. Every, yeah, it's a special email to give away. Uh, yeah. Because, yeah, because you guys are good at it. Uh, uh, Dave Wiserum Gumbarker says, Pete, mate, please, 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 please get big pipe mugs in. Yeah, Are you listening, I, Pete? Yeah, you I'm can... going to point at Pete, mate, through his kitchen wall. <laughs> there you go, Pete, mate. Pete, mate. Pete, mate. Big pipe mugs. <laughs> Look at we're pointing into Pete's yeah, kitchen in three dimensions. That's big. Yeah, yeah, you want a mug that's at least this big compared to your head. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That kind of size. Yeah, more more e models coffee in them. Because yeah. the thing is, if you have a big mug, then it means the whole mug of water can last for the entire live stream. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, pint mugs. Uh, we could get some uh, uh, shot glasses, little big glasses. We could get t shirts, yeah, t shirts, t shirts, e models, t shirts. Pl yeah, we need to petition, we need to get a petition, don't we? Pete, uh, get the e models t shirts. Do you want to start that sentence again? It kind of went a bit wobbly in the middle. <laughs> it, yeah, it's yeah, it's not really water having my cup, it's gin. And, it's yeah. and unfortunately, this time it is water, that's why it's a bit wobbly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we should start, we, we should get a petition going get peter to get some get them t-shirts in yeah, we get yes we've been kind of waiting on e-models t-shirts for a while now because we kind of need them for the summer when it can't gets to the point where we can't wear these big fat jackets yeah we should we should pick it his store stand outside yeah, t-shirts drive drive for an hour to get to a store to pick it i'm not coming in but i've driven all the way to not come in <laughs> I think that's how it works. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. down with Pete. Oh, coffee. Thank you, Pete. Down with this sort of thing. Steady yeah. now. Steady now. Uh, right. Let's go give a let's go give a prize away in the uh, prize giveaway. 
Right, I have to do the screen sharing. You do again. Let's oh. give the prize away and the prize giveaway. I forgot what we're giving away. Now what we're giving away? Oh, yes. Right, yes. Remember that one? That, you remember what we're giving away now? Yeah. Screen share. Share. Right. Get rid of all the rubbish. Uh, right, uh, that one. That's last week's giveaway. This week's giveaway is doing. Uh, Somebody bagger. said in the chat. I can tell by Fox's grin they're giving away a gumpler. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we're going to give away the uh, Bandai One One Forty Fourth Real Grade MSO Six F Zaku. Uh, real grades are like a step between Master Grade and Perfect Grade. So you get um, you get super super detail more than you would in a Master Grade. Uh, but you get a sort of pre, slightly pre-assembled frame and lots of insane detail, but it's in 1144th scale. So it's high grade scale, but it's kind of master grade slash a touch of perfect grade quality. They're beautiful little kits, great fun. They don't take up a lot of space on your shelf. And because this is a Zaku, you can weather the living carp out of it to make it look battered and rusted if you want. You can make it nice and shiny, but it's cheap grunt suit. It's it's the lowest of the low in terms of mobile suits, so they're always battered and beaten and rusted. Yeah, so you we're, we're like but to... you do get insane detail on these kits. <laughs> we'd just like to interrupt this public broadcast to just to announce, Chris Williams, you can't win it. <laughs> yeah, Chris, you can't. I, I, before we went live, I said to Ted, I bet Chris says something about that because it's one one forty fourth scale. But he can't win it. Uh, <coughs> never mind, Chris. Yeah. Uh, yes. So there you are. There you are. Yeah. And all you have to do uh, to win this kit is after the show's ended and the uh, stream goes live uh, or it goes onto YouTube, all you have to do is make a comment underneath uh, the video. Uh, yeah, down don't down. do it in the chat now because it's no, no, we, no, we, we leave it for a week so that people that don't watch this live and people that can't access the chat can enter as well. Uh, and all you need to do is. For this week, it's going to be another silly noise comment. What we want you to do is we want you to write down what that Hitachi rolled roller with the vibratory function sounds like when it's doing its vibratory function on the road, rolling the road roller. Yeah. So that, that young lady's riding that vibratory function road roller thing along on, on the Japanese highway. What noise is it making? Uh, no rude comments, please. Yes, keep it clean. <laughs> keep it clean. <laughs> Yeah. Trash it, don't trash it. Yeah, and uh, uh, yeah, keep it clean. But yeah, what noise is that road rollery thing? No, no, it can either be a noise in English or it can be a noise in Japanese. Yes, we could do it in Swedish if you want, or yeah, anything. So that's that's what you're gonna do. Just yeah, so up. give it about ten minutes after the stream is finished. Pop along to the YouTube page. Stick your comment on the YouTube video for this stream. Obviously, this week's stream, not last week's stream, uh, probably not next week's stream because it won't exist. Uh, and we will pick one at random next Monday, and that person will win the the uh, real grade Zaku Two. Well, not a Zaku Two; it's the MSO Six F Zaku. One of these things. Uh, and you could be, it, yeah, you could be uh, your uh, your first time into Gumpla. Yeah, but these they are really nice. Uh, the real grades are, I say, they're smaller than Master Grades, one forty four scale, so they're about this big. Um, one forty four scale would be. I can tell you how big it would be. Would be around about that size. That's a Buster Gundam in one one forty four scale. That's high grade, not real grade. So they're nice, nice size. Don't take up a lot of space on your shelf, but they're still rife for weathering. Lots of little tiny parts. You can have some good fun. Mm. Um, but really good for weathering. Zaku's are great for weathering, which is why I picked a Zaku for this week's prize because you can scruff it up and make it battered and rusty and muddy and horrible. And I, yeah. I, I have a feeling well, you can make it nice and shiny. I have a feeling this week's entry could be quite full. Yeah, why not? Who's going to say no to I've got a real grade uh, RX-78 too up there. It was very kindly sent to me by Vincent that I need to get on with at some point. Mm. And a lot of strike guns. Well, like, it's about time we did a, about time we did a Gumpler giveaway, so there you go. Yeah, we yeah. So, yeah, just to let you know that E-Models stocked them. So if you don't win it, go and have a look at what they've got. Yeah, and if you don't, if you don't know that E-Models do Gumpler, do pop along. It's in the menu option at the top under, where is it? Uh, plastic model kits, Gumpler model. Go to the plastic model kits bit and it's in there. They've got a, quite a nice little selection. Not a massive selection because they're only just started stocking Gumpler. So go and have a look. Okay. Next day delivery, perfect. Yeah, because obviously if the guys at E-Models are seeing that they are going out the door, uh, they'll get some more. 
Good. Uh, right, it's working its way up to the witching hour. Uh, time to close things down, I think. We've done a couple of hours on our own without Chris supporting us. We see we can do it without him, you know. Yeah, it's not the same though. It's not. It's not the same. Yeah, yeah. There's something missing. Mm, yeah, something Chris. small missing. <laughs> yeah, uh, a little I, tiny fella that's not in the corner. Uh, and we also on that note, we've had a uh, bit of a conversation with Tony, our other e-model builder, um, and uh, you'd never know. He might be able to make an appearance in due course. Yeah, you know Tony, the fourth guy on the title picture that you don't yeah. actually see. Yeah, it's just Tony's work and family and things. Yeah. It uh, means he can't always have the time. Tony to works like twenty-four hours a day, so he yeah, does say he would like to get in and see you all, uh, but uh, obviously he can't. But he'll, he'll try uh, in the future. So, right. Yeah. Uh, on that note, we hope everything uh, with Chris has worked out all right at A&E and everybody's home and safe. And uh, He's still with us, so he must be still be sitting there waiting. So, so he's either sat still in A&E. We know how I hope little, little Chris Jr., which doesn't really work because it's <laughs> not a boy, um, uh, <laughs> he's back to normal operations. Yeah, so, so he'll be back next week, hopefully, and then he can run the show because we'll just sit back and let him do it. Yeah, we might have to have a few impact impact events of our own. We have asked Chris to make sure his family knows that any kind of, you know, impact events should occur not on a Monday night. Yes. If possible. D yeah, nobody could do anything on a Monday night. Yes. Please just sit quietly throughout the course of a Monday uh, until after, you know, the clock. Anyway, we wish Tony well and his family. Uh, we wish you lot as well. Well. Yeah. We, we well, 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 well. Yeah. Um, well, well. Yeah, we hope you're all well. Uh, I would like to wish you all good night for tonight from E Models live stream. Ted here, me, him, him, and the other guy down here, Fox, and I, yeah, and him, night all, and him, and Pete, uh, and Chris, who would be down here somewhere. Well, Pete wouldn't be down there. Uh, right, so we're going to put, we're going to press the button and turn everything off. I wish you all well. I'll see you all next week. So good luck for the live uh, draw, the live stream draw. I'll see you next week. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Bye now. Adios, amigos. Uh, I've got to find the button again. There it is.